Hello everyone. Thanks for joining, subscribing my YouTube channel. Now in this course, I'm going to discuss more and more about Cisco security product. Security products such as Cisco ASA firewall, Cisco firepower, and a little bit of troubleshooting techniques related to Cisco IPsec technology inside ASA firewall and other devices. Okay, while you watch this uh, recording, obviously you want document as well, the slides and uh, scripts as well. So what I have done, you can go to the giganetworkers.team. There you will find one new tab, other courses. If you go there, you'll find one more uh, option here in this drop down, uh, firepower plus ASA firewall. Go and click there. Once you click there, uh, you will see here that uh, one link is there. This is OneDrive link. If you go and open that OneDrive link, I have put the scripts related to my other course as well, that is CCNP in auto, enterprise automation. Apart from that, I have put the script related to, API script related to Firepower as well, plus the configuration command lines related to ASA Firewall. Okay, so you can go and consume this information. Then, uh, what about the slides and PPT? So if you go and refresh the page, the slides related to Firepower will come. And most of the ASA Firewall related stuff I have explained in the video itself. So at the moment you're showing that no preview, but you will, if you go and refresh the page, you'll find it. So here you can see that we have the document and you can refer these documents while you are watching the video. Okay, make your own notes, uh, create your own document, try to learn um, everything uh, in pen or paper. So what I'm doing, you can see there, I have my notebook always. I am writing everything inside my notebook. Um, if you write inside the notebook, if you make your own notes, if you draw inside the uh, you know, paper and pen, use paper pen, or maybe your whiteboard, etc., then your learning will increase drastically because obviously when we write something, it's directly going into the brain. And that's one, one of the way that when you are learning multiple technologies, multiple CCIs as well. So use this technique. Try to write short notes uh, in, in a notebook and it will improve your learning capability. At least for in my case, uh, it has improved. All right, so please continue this uh, video. Please keep watching this video and you'll find that first few hours, first eight hour dedicated with respect to firepower. And I'm, I'm putting five minute, five minute break as well. So maybe after three hour or four hour, you will get one five minute timer. So you can go and have a cup of coffee or tea and then you can continue, correct? Likewise, uh, after that, after firepower, you will find the ASA firewall video and then you'll find one very important uh, maybe one hour or one and a half hour video recording related to troubleshooting as well. All right, so please continue watching this video till end and you will learn new things from here for sure. Hi everyone, welcome to ABC of Firepower Threat Defense Basic Lab Guide. In this particular series, I'm going to cover most of the features that we have with FMC and FTD starting from installing those uh, FTT uh, there in the FMC. So we have actually two plane. One is the management plane. One is the data plane. And first we'll install the management plane. Then we'll do the configuration uh, for the data plane. The overall idea for this particular FMC type of security device is this that you have something called a central management plane or you have something called central management software from there you can manage n number of remote locations so n number of remote locations you have ftd and what you can do that you can create say the url filtering ssl policing malware file detection policies intrusion policies platform settings, a VPN, maintenance, monitoring, alerts, everything, all the rules you will create at the level of FMC and then you need to push that to all the FTT. Okay, so this is the nice thing that you don't need to go to the individual devices and there you are uh, configuring all uh, these parameters. Okay, so the one important thing here is that we have the centralized management 
for my entire security regions that is one thing the second very important thing here in such type of security management engines that we can do everything with help of api programming as well okay so that is again one neat thing because this is a lab guide so i will walk you through all the basic concepts of all these features that is listed here so my strategy is this that for few of the starting series uh, I will show you in the PPT first. So whatever steps I am going to put here, I'll show you in the PPT and then I will go and configure over FMC. But once you are very good with say uh, few of the uh, sections, then uh, from here onwards what I will do, I'll directly log into the FMC and directly from there I will show you all the features and all the capabilities. Okay, so I hope this particular series will uh, be informative to you and you will learn a nice thing about such type of centralized security zones and uh, security uh, management engines. Hi everyone. In this section, I am going to discuss about the comparison between AC firewall and firepower. Now, we need to understand this that Firepower is not a Cisco product. So what Cisco has done that they have acquired this company and you can see here by 2013. Now the thing is that suppose Cisco whenever they are acquiring any company say in this case they acquire a company called Sourcefire. Now the problem here that Sourcefire they have their own client. So this company, they have their own client and let me change the color so you can check that. They have their own client, then they have their own operating system. In this case, they have their firewall called Sourcefire and then they have their business model. Means primarily these three things will be there uh, with a company. So their business model, their client to whom they are supporting and their operating system. Now, when it is coming inside Cisco umbrella, what Cisco is doing that obviously now that client have Cisco business model, they, they come under Cisco businesses, these clients. Now it's actually good for the client because now they will get Cisco support. So from client perspective, it is good from the company perspective because already Cisco acquired that company. So obviously Cisco has to run their own business model. Now the important thing here in our perspective as a network or security engineer in terms of operating system perspective that how Cisco will change this operating system. That is the one thing. Now in terms of this operating system now you have to think like this that Cisco not only they acquire company, but they acquire some client and which were running the say different uh, firewalls, the source fire hardware or the software based firewall. Now think like this that Cisco also have firewall and they have this ASA firewall adaptive security appliances. Now Cisco suppose they have 1000 client who is running ASA firewall those 1000 client they are running suppose 10 ASA firewall each something like that now the problem with Cisco or the Cisco client that how Cisco propose to its client that okay you throw your box you throw your ASA firebox and you start using new ASA firewall or new uh, product firewall that is the problem here with the Cisco and the business model. Then what Cisco is doing that they are proposing some solution. Cisco is telling to their existing client that okay, you change the operating system. Means in the next uh, maintenance video, you can use this operating system with this parameter, with this criteria and your ASA firewall will become uh, say source fire firewall or some other 
uh, high capable firewall okay so i hope you understand the concept that from cisco perspective while they are acquiring any company they need to rebrand uh, or they need to improve the operating system because if you do not improve if you do not rebrand then how you can sell to your existing customer okay so that's why the thing here if you go to the comparison between cisco asa firewall and the source fire fire uh, firepower firewall then you'll find there are much differences there are a lot many things that we can do with the firepower that we can't do with asa firewall although here in this slide you can see that the asa firewall is good enough to do the clustering vpn protocol inspection uh, they are there for data center security and this asa firewall uh, is one of the best selling firewall or one of the most uh, existent firewall in the customer premises they have number of capabilities because initially you know that initially cisco has pix firewall and that is uh, that has very limited scope it was doing sort of filtering and you know lots of limitation and things are there with pix firewall then they move to a firewall they are not telling this as a firewall they are telling this is a security appliance so adaptive security appliance means this firewall or the appliance has a framework to do firewalling to do inspection identity based policy control service provider security uh, no vrf we can create for this means we can create context like that so that's why now again now what cisco is telling okay we have cloud uh, and the uh, attacks are improving the threats are there the vulnerabilities are there then you need to move to next generation firewall so from here you have to move to next generation asa or you can say that next generation firewall and we'll see that if we move from the asa firewall that is a complete solution that is a complete firewall to next generation firewall what type of things we needed means why we move already i have a running and successful existing infrastructure then why do i move to next generation firewall and you'll find that the answer is this that if you move to next generation firewall so let me uh, go step by step in this section so this portion you can think that this was something called legacy firewall that is doing all these things like the stateful inspection in natting routing gateway vpn switching remote access vpn and then we have something called asa firewall which has support for the context uh, ha clusters uh, deep packet inspection like that with some integration so if i move from here you can see this tag line this is the scope of the typical firewall then if i check this particular framework where i can do the application control in terms of detecting the application obviously the deep packet inspection uh, with uh, protocol anomalies signature de uh, detection and a lot many other things allow and block application and sub functions like uh, you are uh, uh, no allowing facebook and then inside facebook the chat window uh, then other capabilities like that allow block apps by user that is again a powerful thing user based uh, uh, what you can say the restriction or permission allow block app by the tag category risk rating okay so all these things that related to app control you have inside the next generation firewall now this next generation firewall not only they can do the access control and the app control not only up to this portion but they are they can be extended to the ips systems so you don't need a separate box for ips ids in the same 
box in the same infrastructure you can do the ips capability as well ips is something called intuition prevention system where you can access or assess the vulnerabilities and obviously you have the signatures rule defined from ips uh, sensors you can detect the anomaly related to a user profile network profile or any type of protocol anomaly you can detect that enterprise accuracy and performance so oh, all the time you have the new signature you can upload to the ips then again it will um, check or the cross verify to the attacks threats like that so it's it's something like incremental signature update that you can do inside the ips and here you can see that in my next generation firewall framework i can do access control application control threat prevention okay now till here i can do with the next generation firewall then why why do i need the firepower uh, firewall means why i'm moving from asa because this much thing i can do with the asa firewall as well because in the asa firewall itself i can integrate asa firewall with ips sensors and i can do access control app control threat prevention but but it's still the scope is there to do the context awareness that is the uh, correlate host and user activity passive os fingerprinting passive service identification vulnerability network discovery auto policy recommendation auto implement assessment not only these things but in the coming recordings uh, you will come to know that is still the scope is there that the use to or the ease to use these applications are uh, good the way we can implement the way we can monitor the way we can maintain and operate is very good with the firepower next generation firewall and we'll see that there are so many uh, scopes we have in this so that's why we are moving from asa fire firewall to next generation uh, firewall and in terms of either integrating with asa firewall or we can use the standalone or the source firewall source fire firewall itself okay so these are the things that actually inspire uh, the businesses to use the source fire firewall okay so let me stop here and in the next recording we'll check the other aspects of asa firewall and the source fire firewall in this section again we'll understand the hardware of asa and firepower and if you see the asa firewall hardware uh, evolution you'll come to know that uh, starting from 12 actually uh, starting for from 5505 the they move to 15 25 45 like that so this is the incremental up, upgrade or the evolution of the asa firewall and here one thing important that while they are incrementing this asa firewall they have been integrated with ips and uh, if we think in terms of next generation firewall then we have next generation ips appli application visibility control then we have amp features that is the malware protection so these features we have while we are incrementing with asa product line but again we'll see that where we have the integration of the firepower i'll show you that as well before that let me move to the next slide and here uh, you can see the difference between the asa firewall product line and the standalone uh, firepower product line so firepower product is simply acquired from a source fire and they have series 400 or 900 like that asa firewall they have the series of 5500 like that and because we have seen that what is the problem that cisco has because cisco they have their own client then how they will tell their client that you change the entire hardware use the new hardware so that's why they they have the integration 
with the source fire firewall with their original project and here in this slide you can see this that uh, we have the integration and this is actually very important to understand that if we are integrating source fire firewall or the firepower so let me use firepower instead of source fire firewall I'll use the firepower so firepower integration with ASA but uh, the problem here is the the throughput is from 250 MB to 1.7 MB in this series even if we go to the advanced firewall plus the firepower integration we have throughput from 4 gig to 15 GB but if we check the standalone firepower you can see the throughput for 41 series is up to 25 GB and this 9300 is up to 100 GB so that is the difference but still uh, we are thinking about the integration so better that you can use the standalone device instead of uh, you know integrating firepower with ASA firewall if you have if you have option to do so otherwise uh, we can check for the integration now here at the bottom you can see these next generation firewall capabilities all managed by firepower management center and in short that is FMC firepower management center now let me show you the data sheet for ASA firewall firepower and FMC so let me go to the data sheet here and uh, in the firepower management center that uh, I'm going to discuss in the lab section you'll find that with this particular manage server you can manage next generation firewall firepower series next generation IPS Cisco firepower threat def defense for ISR the advanced malware protection you will get beautiful dashboard all these things I'll show you in the lab section and here uh, we can understand this okay this particular FMC is uh, of both is of both means it can have a software capability or it can have a hardware okay, so that's why I'm scrolling a little bit slowly so you can just pause and check the features but let me scroll down you can see there that the OVA file we can install over ESXi or KVM or AWS services these are the hardware platforms we have starting from 750 to 4500 and these are the number of managed uh, server or sensors IPS uh, this is the data set uh, you can understand the hardware requirement all these things okay now secondly I'll show you the ASA with firepower integration and uh, you will you'll find here that this sophisticated cyber attacks with uh, superior security and that is again the marketing term they are providing the next generation IPS so that is actually important that not not only you have the capability of uh, the firewall but you have the capability of IPS you have the capability of malware protection as well if you have time you can go through you can check the video from this link let me scroll down here and uh, you can see the model comparison that is there in our slide as well but uh, the important thing here that as you increment with your model so suppose if I move from 5506 to 5516 the overall capability is increased from 300 to 900 and then again the this series it is increasing to 20 gbps and all those things and they have these features services all these things that you can check and finally let us check this firepower standalone series and this is the data set for that starting with 2k so 2100 then we have discussed about this 4 and 9 series the overall throughput the capability of application visibility control 
the IPS capabilities, all these capabilities are really very high in this firewall. And you'll come to know in our upcoming section that they are supporting the APIs as well. And that, that is again one of the important aspect of uh, this next generation firewall that not only they have this much of capability of doing malware protection, IPS protections, the firewalling things, extended content filtering, extended uh, uh, deep packet inspection is all these things they have all these capabilities they have but is still we have the uh, option to extend the limit means we can manage with help of the restful apis so they understand the apis controls all these things they are understand we'll see in the upcoming uh, recordings uh, videos and these are the three links that i have used uh, just to show you uh, about this firepower FMC and the ASA and the firewall integration okay so let me stop here and obviously in next section we'll learn more about this in this section I am going to explain you that what is our lab agenda means in this particular course what type of steps that we are going to cover to reach or to install our FMC and FTT this is our lab topology and actually this is fairly basic one here you can see that I have my head office here that is the headquarter in this particular headquarter you can see that I have one centralized FMC controller and from this controller I will manage my FDT across my branch so I have one data center here and two branch these are my LAN connection and I have one PC LAN connection I have one PC all these FDT so either at HQ or branch they are connected to their internet gateway like this and then you can see what is the IP address scheme I am using towards the internet and here in this particular LAN segment so three things you'll come to know here one is the IP address used in the LAN segment that is of the range of 172.16 172.16 like this so I have HQ 1 HQ DMG branch 1 branch 2 like this and obviously one of the uh, internet uh, PC I have just for testing purpose we'll see that so that is the one part the other part I have that the IP address used towards my internet gateway that is the other part that is the 19818 1.0 okay so let us see that what are the things I'm going to cover up uh, in the uh, scenario one uh, I will install firepower management center now remember that I'm not going to install the OVA over ESXi that will be pre-configured means I have the say FMC installed over ESXi like that but in this particular recording I will upload that uh, file or the steps that how you can install the OVA over ESXi okay but my FMC will be ready and means the blank container container uh, container will be there I'm going to do next 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 what are the steps are there to start the FMC engine like that okay then installing the FDT after that oh, once I have my FMC we'll see that what are the use case restrictions and uh, other stuffs related to FMC then I will install FTT at my HQ my remote site one place I will use a static IP one place I will use DHCP server to install that then I'll configure the you know, baseline security uh, stuffs like uh, URL filtering SSL policy malware detection and configuration intuition uh, policies 
some other VPN parameters and finally in the last section we'll check the FMC and FTT maintenance data monitoring obviously in the final we have this API programming for the FMC because uh, the, these FMC again we can connect with the restful API's and from there we can manage monitor uh, my FMC controller okay so all these steps I will do uh, one by one and here one thing again I want to add that we have this OOP server as well that is out of band management server and these traces you can see these are the IP addresses for all the LAN segment uh, managements going to the OOP server. So I'll go to my out of band management server from here. I will go to uh, go and reach to all the devices one by one. So that is the capability we'll check in the lab section. So these are the things I'm going to cover up and this will cover merely the important points related to uh, FTT. Let us start the scenario number one. In this particular section, I am going to log into dot two five zero. That is my HQ workstation. From there, I will log to FMC and then I'll configure it. Now, when it comes to installing and do the baseline configuration for Firepower Management Center, we have three options. Either at the time of deployment of OVA, we can do all those settings. That is the first thing or with help of CLI we can do the network configuration such as sudo configure network and then we'll get some uh, questions that we have to answer third option that after the booting up we have some IP address so we can log to the URL and then step by step we can change the configuration I'm going to use the third one because the OVA is already installed there and then step by step I need to uh, do the configuration so what I'm going to do I'm going to log to 172.16.100 so let me go to my server here I can go to my Mozilla and then I log to 172.16.100 and after that I'll get all the options so one by one I will do all the settings so let me click to the advanced because I need to sign the certificate uh, let me add exception confirm security exceptions uh, once that is signed I can use username and password so once I'm in here and then uh, step by step I'll walk you through all the steps so let me go inside this device and here you can see that I have multiple options related to network threat intuition so one by one what I will do one by one I will walk you through all the steps and this is the dashboard still it is loading up so let the dashboard load up and what we have to do in the first section I'll go to system configuration and I will do the configuration related to say time time zone NTP and some other stuffs related to license so that is the overall goal for this particular section first let me go to system and configuration and from there I have to select the VMware tools so let me go there here is my system and then configuration once I click to configuration it will come up now you can see that I have this option of uh, VMware tool so let me drag a little bit down 
So you can see all the options here. You can see we have options related to audit login DNS again the dashboard database then the informations intuition system rest api in this particular lab one by one i'll come to all these sections i'll try to cover up most of them let me scroll down by the end of this you have vmware tools and the vulnerability mapping let me click to vmware tools because i want that should be checked so let me click and wait enable vmware uh, tools yeah Yes. So once it is doing uh, what's the next thing that I have to do select the time notice the current time the default time is this turn because we are dealing with the example corp so we need to set the time zone that whatever time we have in the dot two five zero and we need to synchronize the time okay so it is saved you can see successful set let me close here and what is the time we have 17th if I click here let us check the time uh, you can see the time zone UTC minus 7 no problem so now what I can do I can go to time let me scroll down it's my time let me go to time synchronization let me sync the time yeah it is getting the time from that is the correct no problem on that let me save this first because if you are checking the alerts and various parameters so your obviously your time should be matched otherwise you, you will have some no problem so it's okay it is getting it from the correct NTP server likewise no uh, we are checking all these things step by step so I don't want to miss any any steps the next uh, in this task I have to select the management interfaces and I need to check the setting so let me directly go back and I have to go to management interfaces let me click to management interfaces once I am there then I have to check the configuration related to management interfaces so here you can see the pencil button you have and uh, apart from that the shared setting or the host name the domain is example.com this is the primary secondary DNS port number let me scroll bit down proxy is not enabled now important thing here you can see that I have two uh, interfaces one is the management interface ETH0 and other one is the route so if I click to my management interface it is showing that your management interface what is the IP address and the setting even we have the option for the IPv6 as well let me close this let me show you the route that it is showing that my default gateway is this one I'll come to know that where it is suppose if you want to add you have this plus button you can add and also I have the search icon as well okay so all these things we are doing uh, with help of this GUI interface parallelly if you log to the uh, admin uh, FMC I log via putty then we know that what is the configuration to uh, do it that is the sudo config network so if I click or if I type sudo and then config network 
and if I press enter then you will get the same options uh, here on and it is not visible let me do some tweaking here let me change the setting I want to change the appearance actually I want to change the color and the foreground is say green there is some color problem so that's why we are not able to see that okay so if I type sudo okay so some reason and the fonts are not coming so again I need to change it so no problem uh, I'll change it and what I'm going to do that the other option we have here uh, that we can use sudo and the config network that that will also work just to make you visible in the back I have increased the font size what I what I have done I log into HQ FMC and I have given this command sudo config network now you will get that question here so if I type yes then it will ask that management IP is this yes this is the network yeah this is the gateway and because I have increased the font size so let me drag this out okay so you can see this screen uh, are these settings are correct yes these are the correct settings I don't want to use IPv6 okay so uh, whatever things that we are getting here in the management interface we can see that we are getting in the CLI as well okay so let me go on and complete this module we have set the time zone we have checked the management interface via the GUI via the CLI and then finally what I have to do I have to do two more thing that is the I have to go to the system and the users and I have to check the users and then from there itself I have to check the license so only two tasks are left for this particular section so let me do that as well system and then I can go to users once I'm inside the users then let us see what user I'm the admin user I have the full access unlimited uh, things that I can do then I, I can create user rules uh, external authentication all these things I can do uh, here itself in the system itself you can see that we have the license option and I'm going to use the smart license that will be 90 day evolution period license and about this license you'll come to know that okay we have four type of license this will be there by default means this is there this is the perpetual license but you need some add-ons as well so if you want some add-ons like license for threat license for malware license for URL filtering those are the term based licenses and according to your Cisco smart net contract you need to purchase them so uh, this particular section you need to uh, clear out that how much advanced malware protection how much URL filtering now, this is again the need base that what is needed in your network and what type of license you want from the Cisco then you can go for it but by default you have the base license and this particular uh, example or in this particular section uh, I'm going to use 90 day evolution period where I have all these types of license okay so let me go to here and I want to run in the evolution mode you are about to start area I want to start 
and now you can see that uh, I am getting 90 day uh, license it will expire in 89 days base malware threat and URL filtering so all these license I will get okay so that was the overall task of this particular section although it is a basic the introductory one and uh, we have done means we haven't installed the OVA over ESXi but after that first time we have logged to the device we have done some parameter change like the time time zone then the we, we check the license user like that and in the upcoming recordings we'll you know go more and we'll go scenario by scenario in the upcoming sessions in this section I'm going to walk you the steps that uh, how we can install FTD at HQ side remember what is our topology our topology is that I have FMC here in my data center and in the same HQ I'm going to install my FTD as well the IP addresses we know that for FMC that is dot hundred since the full IP address is 172.16.100.100 and for this FDT the management IP address is dot 10 so 172.16.100.10 so this I am going to add uh, step by step we will check that how we are going to do that and this will be the part one in the subsequent recording uh, we will install it fully so what what are the steps that uh, I'm going to follow and uh, step by step we follow all those things so first of all what I need to do here that the integration of FMC with FTD and remember this is my management control from this particular uh, management or the controller I am going to manage all my FTT so I have FTD my uh, firepower threat defense at my HQ then at my remote locations so for that I need some policies as well that will come to know that how many policies we need for that because see all these things should registered with FMC as well so first of all I need to register this with FMC I know that my management IP is this so what I can do here I can SSH to HQ uh, FTD and then I have to issue this command configure manager add 172.16.100 that is the management IP for my FMC and then I have to use some pre-shared key now the same thing I have to do in the FMC as well so let us do first from my HQ FTD and let me go to my HQ FTD so here I am SSH to my HQ FTD and I have to issue con command so let me issue that command and once I issue that command then obviously you can see that command so I'm going to issue a command that is configure manager and then add uh, with the pre-share key and the same pre-shared key I will use at my FMC level as well so let me do that okay so here you can see I added this command config manager uh, and then the IP address the pre-share key I use sys and then same uh, register key I have to use at the FMC and suppose if I re-enter that command one more time something like Cisco 123 then it will tell that okay you have uh, this thing is already exist okay so 
then what I have to do, I need to go to my FMC. So let me go to my FMC controller. And from there, I need to add this. So I am here at my FMC. And let me show here as well in the slide. So next, next step, what you have to do that uh, you have to go to your FMC, go to device, device management, and then you have to add the device. Okay. So you need to add that. Let me go to my controller devices. Okay. Uh, once I am inside the devices, I need to go to device manager from where I can add the device. Okay. So we'll wait. We have this device management. So I am here inside the device, device management. Then I'll click to add. The drop down will come. I want to add device and here you can see I have option add the other steps as well in the add device uh, I will add the devices like this the host name the display name the uh, registration key and the group so the host name is the IP address say 172.16. Hundred dot ten. That is my HQ FTD. Display name. I want to display as a HQ FTD. Registration key is sys. I'm using. Say group. I need it. And for the moment, suppose the group is none, but the access policy I need it. For that, I need to create new access policy. So let me create that new access policy. And uh, before I move to this access policy, let me show you that what does it mean by access policy? Actually, you need three type of policy, access policy. So one of the access policy will be your parent access policy. Okay, like you have to create new policy and you go to that. You need three access policy. The first one will be base policy. So this access policy is the base policy or the common policy. It's okay. And then I need two other policy. So one policy I need for HQ that will be the second policy so the first policy or the first access policy is equivalent to base policy the second one I want for HQ and the third one I want for the my uh, I want for my remote locations or remote offices so in this hierarchy I need three policy okay so I'll create new policy like this this policy will be my base policy where I am going to block all the traffic that is my default action. So let me create say policy name is base policy. Suppose this is the common or parent policy. Uh, select base policy is done. Okay, default action is block all traffic. I can save this. It is loading up. Let the policy will be loaded. And in the smart licensing, I will check all these boxes because I want the malware threat and URL filtering policies, and then I'll register. So once I save this policy, then I go to my 
next step there I will check all these smart licensing and once I register this so let me register this here it is registering once it register this then what I can do here then I can go to my deployment state I can check my task okay and in that uh, it has three tabs deployment health and task uh, basically I am interested in the task menu okay. so uh, it is registering the process is going on here in the green deployment area so if I click to my deploy because in the deploy it will show you three things it will show you deployments health and task that I can check okay so meanwhile it is deploying this will wait and uh, uh, parallelly I can go to my uh, HQ FTT so still it is uh, doing it and it is a bit slow actually it will take some five to six minutes to do its process so let us this will continue its process no problem and uh, showing that it is ungrouped yeah because I haven't select any group so that's why so let me go to the HQ FTT and from the CLI we'll check what is the status and then I'll come back here you can see the deployment health but in the health we have some alert message and then the task okay so all these three uh, status bars we have and then the, in the task you can see that policy deployment is going on as so download successfully deployment is in progress because yeah, obviously it will take some five to six minute to deploy it fully and we can see all those task related messages that we are getting here okay so from here you can get all those information okay so finally if you go to your HQ FTT and if you type show managers uh, it will show you the status completed we'll check that so finally what I'll do I'll go to my uh, HQ FTT and if I type show managers you can see that the registration is completed the type is manager host is this and we are done okay so this was the part one and in the upcoming uh, sessions we'll learn more about the installation problem in part one we have done the integration of the FMC with the FTD now in this particular section I'm going to configure the HQ uh, data interfaces and we'll see that uh, that how many interfaces we have actually we have three interfaces so let me show you this yeah actually we have three interfaces interface number one so let me draw here I have my HQ F here so one interface is going towards the inside that is gig zero zero and we'll check that one interface is going towards ISP that is gig zero one so that I will make as uh, outside security level same that we are doing in the ASA firewall this gig 00 I'll make as a inside interface so I'll make that as an inside security level and one third interface I have that is going towards my DMG server that is gig 0 slash 2 that will be my DMG and respectively I will check what will be the IP addresses on these interfaces 
okay so for that you have to go to your fmc and you have to create to this edit icon so let me do that parallelly i'll go to my fmc here i can go to the edit section and once i click there then i will get the options related to the interface and the interface configuration uh, it will take some time to pop up so no problem we'll wait yeah here you can see so here you can see that i have interface i have inter 00 01 02 and very importantly you can see here that i don't have interface that is the management interface here so i don't have management interface here but i have all the gig interfaces so one by one let me go and configure the interfaces let me go to my first interface that is gig 00 that is going to be connected with the inside so let me click to the pencil button and these are the things so let me go to my ppt and let me check that what ip addresses i'm going to use so for that gig 0 slash 0 interface i am going to use mode as a none name as a lan site i need to enable it and then i'll check the security level the security zone is inside and then inside the ipv4 address i have to use ip type as a static and 172.16 100 dot one okay so let me do all those things so mode is none name i can give inside lan so let me do that and once i give that name then i i have to do the enable so let me type inside lan as the name enable it security i want new security level and that should be the inside security level that is my inside okay description i can give but for the moment uh, let it be like this my inside interface towards my HQ. Then I need to settle down the IPv4 address. So let me click IPv IPv4 address, and then I have option that I can use a static DHCP or triple PoE. Now my IP address here is that will be the gateway. So that is 172. Dot one six dot hundred dot one slash twenty four because we need the subnet as well, and then I'll do the OK. Once I press OK, then it is updating its configuration. Please save the configuration, and I need to save this configuration. to make the changes workable okay so uh, it's very important here that uh, whenever you are doing the configuration say you can see here the logical name inside and the ip address i haven't given the mac address then parallelly what you have to do you have to save the configuration as well suppose if you don't save the configuration then it will not uh, take the effect Okay, so parallelly what you have to do that you have to save the configuration as well. Once I done with the inside interface, let me go to the gig zero slash one that is going towards the ISP. That that will be my ISP side. That will be the outside as a security level. And then the IP address is 198.18.1.2. So let me do it quickly. Let me click to this pencil. That is gig zero slash one. So I'm going to edit this configuration. Uh, the configuration is loading up. 
I can give name as ISP side. So let me do that. ISP side interface, enable this interface. Security zone I want as a new and that will be outside. So let me give that security level as uh, outside. Okay. Description I can give that uh, ISP facing interface. So I can give the description ISP facing interface. Then I need to go to the IPv4 side where I have to put the IPv4 address and in this case uh, towards ISP I have IP address 198.18.1.2 slash 24 okay so once I press OK, it will start saving the configuration. And I'm getting this option that please save the configuration to make this changes. Okay. So let me uh, do the third configuration and then we'll check the other uh, aspects as well. The third is third interface that is going towards DMZ. So here I'll give name as DMZ suppose side. Enable it. Let me correct the name. DMZ site. Security June obviously I have this new security level that is the DMZ. So let me type DMZ here in this new security zone. Okay. It's very much similar that what uh, we have done in the ASA firewall. In the ASA firewall as well, you may know that you have security levels like 100 to 0 to 100 and uh, 100 you are giving to the more secure zone and 0 you are giving to the less secure zone like that. So this side IP address is 172.16 that is according to our lab topology. 102.1 slash 24. Okay. So I am very much done with all these configurations and in this way we are doing the configuration to the interfaces that we have. Okay, so let me stop here and in the next section we'll check up the other aspects like routing and uh, uh, other configuring stuffs. What we have done so far that we have done the baseline configuration to integrate the FMC with the FTD. That is the one step that we have done. The second thing that we have done that we have the we have configured the interfaces. So one is inside one is going towards the ISP and one is the DMG interfaces. The step one is step two we have done. A third step what I am going to do from FMC that I am going to create a static route towards my ISP. And then uh, once I have all these things say once I have the interface configured, once I have the routing configured, once I have the baseline configuration, then that FMC template for FTD and that is the same thing that uh, all the controller based uh, 
you know, deployments are happening either it is a sd wan deployment in the sd wan deployment also we have some sort of controller somewhere from that controller we are selecting the number of devices once we select the number of devices then we push the policy or uh, we push the configuration to that particular device here also i have all the necessary and the baseline configuration for ftt that is my hq ftt once i am done all these steps then i am going to push that configuration to the hq ftt uh, that is the deployment phase once i am done with that deployment phase after that i i will verify with the cli so i will log to the hq ftd uh, via the management interface and i'll check the baseline uh, basic things or baseline configuration okay in the upcoming uh, series i will learn more about the firepower clis okay so uh, let me show you all these things although i have pre configured all these things that uh, in this particular lab section but uh, i'll walk you through all those steps i'll go to routing then in routing we'll find that i have option related to ospf version 3 rip pgp multicast like pim igmp etc there i will select a static route then i will add the route once i click to add the route then i then i will get the option to add my interface in this case i have to add my isp interface then because i am creating some default 000 route so for uh, that reason i will select any ip before and then i have to add the gateway that is a normal uh, static route thing that we are doing with help of cli as well so let me go to my lab section yeah here now i have to go to routing if i go inside the routing then because i have pre configured this so you will get that static route configuration here or it is loading uh, let it be loaded once it will load then i will click to a static route once i click to a static route then you will get the configuration related to a static route so let me click yeah let me click here to the edit option to show you the existing configuration that i have done here so oh, you have to click to the pencil button i am clicking there because it is bit slow to respond so it will come up what i have done i have selected the interface as a isp site if you click here to the drop down menu you will get other options as well that we have three interface inside outside and uh, say inside dmg and isp or uh, outside is my uh, isp we have null zero and diagnostic as well then in the gateway actually i have added this gateway uh if you if you don't have any gateway then you have to click to the plus sign if you click to the plus sign then it will ask you about the gateway there you have to put the uh, ip address so see name description and the ip address that i have already put there as uh, 198181.2 Okay, so let me cancel this to go back. Okay, and because already it is there, so let me cancel it. Even if I want, I can delete and recreate that, but no problem. We have all these things already there. And here also in the PPT also you can see that that after that you can create the gateway like this. once you have the gateway you can save it now we are very much done and we are okay to do the deployment so for the deployment what you have to do you have to go to the deployment here is the deployment tab but before that let me show you one more page here 
so once you done the baseline configuration when you once you has done the configuration then if you click to the device uh, tab basically you will get the dashboard for that particular device so i am inside hq ftd i am getting the dashboard for hq uh, ftd uh, and here the general criteria the mode when i have this edit icon here i can edit this then the system wide thing that this is a virtual uh, ova i am running about the license about the health and finally the management the management ip is uh, 172.16.100.10 okay so finally what you have to do you have to deploy this so for that you have to click to the deploy once you click to deploy then it will ask that what device you want to deploy okay so at the moment i have already deployed it so here that uh, hqftt will come you have to check and then you have to click deploy because I have already deployed so that's why it is not coming up here okay so like that you can deploy if you uh, extend this then you will find all type of policy that access policy DNS policy intuition policy all these things that is going to be deployed from my FMC framework to the FTD once you deploy it, then uh, we can log to the uh, HQFTD and with help of CLI, we can check these things. So let me log to the HQFTD to show you this. I'm logged in here and then I executed command show route. Uh, I'll get the, those routes and if I type show IP, then you can see all these three IP addresses it's very much similar that what we have in the ASA firewall but in the upcoming recording I will show you the different cells in this particular uh, FMC and FTD uh, environment uh, we'll check in the upcoming recording different type of login cells oh, finally we reach to the end of this particular section installing the FTD at the HQ site a cell and summary and in this particular section you will find that we have three different type of login prompts or you can uh, tell cells we have in the yellow box you'll find the cells so while you are doing the console or SSH you are landed to the CLI SH from there if you type something called system support diagnostic CLI then you reach to firepower cell or that is the ASSL suppose if you type expert then you land to Linux user cell that is the user cell and suppose if you type sudo su you land to the Linux root cell so you can see here I have cell number one cell, cell number two you can make this 2a and 2b and then finally I have cell number three that is the ASSL now if you want to return from here so from Linux you have to type exit you come here from here if you type exit it'll go to your CLI SH and suppose from your firepower if you want to return then you have to press control plus A and then D then you can return back to the CLI now the question is why we have this many uh, cells so this Linux cell we know that this Linux cell is there as a backend and uh, if you are opening any type of tag case then they will ask you some sort of uh, you have to run some sort of commands in with respect to Linux cell collect that output and you have to send to the tag that is the one reason this is your you know architecture or your baseline or your fundamental in this particular architecture the CLI cell you can think this as a first line or first cell prompt and finally if you are governing or if you are doing some policy changes or editing in the ASA you can use the ASA cell okay now in this particular 
uh, FMC and this firepower series it's very important to understand that most of the time what we are doing that we are creating the template so this is something like push and pull type of uh, technology that you are making the template at the level of FMC that is your management controller and from there you are pushing the configuration to various FTD so generally speaking if you are doing the configuration monitoring and operating you don't need that CLI now when you need that CLI when you are going to do the trouble and when you are going to do some uh, troubleshooting and that troubleshooting is something like inline troubleshooting means uh, what is the use of CLI CLI are fast so they are directly interacting with the kernel and they are giving the output okay so uh, these are the things that we need to keep in mind so once I'll log to the various CLI then obviously I'll run some commands as well and I will use a Linux command. So if you are very good with the Linux, you can use if config and you can grip a certain thing. Uh, I can type route minus N as well. That is with respect to Linux cell and whatever Linux commands are there that will be supported here in the coming recordings or sessions. We'll see more about this cell and the configurations. We'll check that. So let me log to my firepower uh, HQ FTD and here say if I type I need to type something called system support uh, diagnostic CLI if I type this then you can see here uh, I move to the firepower in firepower again I can type show and then question mark you can see I have options like community history inventory policy list so if I type policy list uh, there is no policy at the moment if I type show and then a version then I can check the version and you will get very interesting output here that because this is a virtual image that we are running VMware image uh, version 6.2 but here you'll come to know that Cisco adaptive security appliance that is the ASA software 9.7 it is running firepower extensible operating system version 2.1 so ASA 9.7 firepower 2.1 and then some other options we have okay whatever interfaces I have it is showing all those things then the serial number and all those stuffs now from here I need to type control a and then D if I type that I'll I can go to C L I S H and suppose from here if I want to move to the Linux cell I need to type expert so if I type expert you can see I can use who am I that is the Linux command I can type ls minus L that is the long list of the command so LA okay. uh, I can type VI and I can do some edit so whatever things are there that we have in the Linux I can do that if I want to check the routes we have some routes here and if I want to check if config interface config and if I want to grip something something like address so it will grip that output for me okay. so obviously if you have the uh, expertise on Linux so you can run various network related Linux commands and you can verify that from here if you want to go to the root so you can type sudo and user super user we just it is asking for the password so password is the command not found sudo super user whatever who let me type 
now you can see that it has changed to root hqftt okay from here if i exit i can go to this cell from here if i exit i can go to the cli such as per uh, our document okay so what i have done because this was very interesting so i haven't covered this in the previous section i left this for this particular section that you can focus only on the cli and the various uh, cells like cli and the line x then the root line x and the asa firepower uh, prompts okay so i hope uh, this particular section will be very informative to you and we'll soon start the next section hi welcome to the section 3 of this particular course and in this particular section i am going to do the configuration for the example corp the first recording i am going to show you how we can do the nat configuration what we have done so far that uh, we have configured the fmc at the head office then we have deployed the ftt at hq Apart from that, we have assigned the IP addresses to all the interfaces like interface in the internal, the external and the outside. OK, so so far we have done all these things. Now, suppose if I want to ping or send my traffic from inside to outside or from DMZ to outside. So these will not work. Why? Because uh, two things. These are the private addresses and these are the public addresses. So we need one NAT to be configured in this direction plus the default rule is there means there is implicit uh, deny rule is there that is denying or blocking all the traffic so what we need we need to permit that as well so first of all we need to create a NAT rule and then we need to change this access policy to allow so these things I'm going to do one by one. Uh, first of all, I want to start with a NAT rule. Now, when it is coming to NAT implementation, I have two options. Either I can use the auto NAT or manual NAT. Although the Cisco recommendation is to use auto NAT because it is e easy to use and it's very much suitable for the voice traffic. Uh, what is the baseline difference between auto NAT and the manual NAT is that in AutoNAT, each rule can apply either the source or destination. That means you have two rules. In case of Malone NAT, you have a single rule translates both the source and the destination. Okay. Now, what is the order? Order is that AutoNAT, it will check the AutoNAT first and then the manual NAT. So, until unless you have some specification, Recommendation is to use the auto NAT and that I'm going to use. So let me go to my uh, FMC and in the devices I can go to NAT. In the NAT, once I am here in the NAT, then uh, you can see here we have this option of new policy. If I click there, I'll get option what type of NAT I want to create. Is it a firepower NAT or threat defense NAT? Our case, it's a threat defense NAT and I'm going to create a NAT for Corp. So that is the Corp NAT. Let me use this FTD. Save this. Once I save this, then I am going to add the NAT rules. So for that, I have this option add rule here. You can click here to add rules. And now you can see uh, this thing is coming. So what rule you want? I want a rule that is auto NAT. Then I want to uh, make type as a dynamic. That's okay. What is the interface object inside for the source, outside for the destination? Okay. So it is telling that original address is not configured. 
and uh, let me check that as well so here also you can see uh, in your screen that th these are the steps that I am following then I go to the add rule I am adding the rule inside outside okay and then in the translation so we have uh, tabs here like interface object translation pool advanced so one by one I will show you all those uh, important uh, tabs okay so let me add the addresses as well you can see here the address is uh, 172 0.0 so let me go to the translation and the source I can click here to the plus I can give name something a uh, corp LAN is my corp LAN network is 172.160.0 slash 24 save this Now I can click here to the drop down menu and I know what is my uh, source There's the core plan and the translated address I can select uh, destination interface IP okay so once I am done here you can see uh, in the auto NAT page and if I click here that to show you this it's a rule is dynamic inside uh, type is you can see type is dynamic source is inside destination is outside original source core plan then this is my original packet in the translated form translated to the interface and then some options are there if I want to do any edit I can click here and edit this if I want to delete it I can delete it no problem so before saving this because you need to save this as well uh, let us check do we have other steps as well okay so here also you can see corp and this ah, so done so let me save now this was the first NAT rule I have created for the inside to the outside world okay and then the next I'm going to create a NAT tool for the DMZ okay so obviously DMZ to outside so let me do that as well and this time you can see the type is a static for the uh, DMZ so auto NAT rule static DMZ outside uh, DMZ server uh, what is the address for that original address is 172.16.102.50 okay uh, you can see on your screen in the translation rule and finally so here you can see that I have two uh, packet one is for DMG private and one is for DMG public okay so keep in mind that uh, this thing I'm going to create so let me go back to the NAT rule and let me add one more rule here this is again auto NAT but this is a static instead of manual and the interface objects DMG to source outside to destination then the translation so I need to add here and in the translation first time I will add the DMG private okay so DMG let me click here and add it DMG private private to DMG like that network is 
0.16102.50 according to our uh, topology diagram. Save it. And again, I want to add one more that is DMG server public and that IP is 198.18.1.50 slash 32. So let, let me add that as well as a uh, other network object. So DMG uh, public Okay. And the IP is 198.18.1.50. That is again according to the topology diagram that we have. Save this as well. Okay. So once we add these two, now it's very important to understand here that my original source is DMG server private and my translated packet is DMG server public and I'm adding inside AutoNAT static rule. So here I will click here to the drop down menu DMG public. Okay. And the translation translated address is DMG public. So DMG uh, private to DMG public. You can see DMG private to DMG public. Okay. Click OK. This rule is unsaved at the moment. Save it. So now I have two DMG rules and I have walked you all the steps that how you can create the NAT tools. So let me stop here and in the next section we'll continue from here. So far we have created two NAT rules. So those NAT tools are one NAT tool was that uh, that is the, the traffic is going from your internal so internal to isp that was the one nat tool the other nat tool i have created that your dmg private to dmg public so from private to say dmg public and third a NAT tool I want to create that from FMC private you can see here FMC private to FMC public okay so already I have created this rule let me show you this rule in the uh, lab section and then I will do the ping here I can go to devices and then NAT this is my corp NAT let me click here to edit once I click edit, you can see I have th three rules. Two rules are bi-directional uh, auto and uh, here you can see that uh, in these two rules, uh, the first two we have created. The third one is this, that is the FMC private to FMC public. If I click here to the edit section from inside to outside and the translation is FMC private to FMC public. Okay. So let us close here and now let us do the ping test. So if I go here and uh, if I ping to the public address and that is uh, 198.184.5, uh, you can see I'm unable to reach and why it is so. So the reason behind this that uh, while you are creating the NAT rules, while your interfaces are routed interfaces, but still there is one default rule and that default rule is deny all, uh, block all the traffic. So we need to change that uh, access control policy. So for that we need to go to policies and then access control. So let me go there. Let me go to devices and then policies. So here you can see devices and then I have this policy tab. If I go to policy, then I if I go to access control and you can see that here in the policy, we have various policy. We have policy related to intuition, malware, DNS, identity, SSL. 
brief filter i will check all these things one by one in the course now if i go here if i click to edit so you can see uh, it will come up let me refresh the page but we will see that by default i have one rule running here and that default rule is to block all the traffic so uh, when this this will pop up uh, it is loading up and you can see that default rule is there to block all the traffic now what i want i want to add a new rule here and i want to allow the land traffic so lands to say outside enable insert into mandatory action allow my security zone is inside and outside is the destination okay once i'll do that then i have to define the network so for the network i want my uh, hq lan that is 172.1600/24 so add this as a source and any ipv4 i can add this as a destination then other options like vlan tags application ports we'll check all these things in the upcoming uh, sessions inspection again uh, this also will check that in the, in the inspection rule the intuition policy i can give security over connectivity uh, will will come to know all these things even if i click here into the allow you can see that how many allow we have like allow trust monitor block block with reset uh, inter interactive block interactive block with reset so all these explanation i will give you in the upcoming uh, recordings and uh, notes is there i'll go through the notes so let me click here to the login i don't want to create log so okay if i want i can check this box then comments even if i want i can put any comment uh, this is corp land to outside traffic something like this okay add this so this is the template building we have built the template means we have built this policy first of all i need to save this over fmc so i am saving it over the fmc controller and the second thing i have to deploy this policy so then the second thing that i need to go to hqftt and deploy this policy so once this policy will be deployed then we'll see that uh, we are getting the responses if everything is okay now before going there so let me walk you all the slides so i went to policy i changed the policy i added the source and destinations and the inspection rules then the add rules i have added then the comment i have added then i deploy this policy over the hq like this and then i am pinging to 198184.5 even i try to open this url then i will open a google home page and then i will open 172.16.100.50 that is the dmg internal and you will find that uh, we have some problem opening this page why i will check that okay. so let us go to our lab and if the policy is deployed then you will find that uh, will reach will get the ping responses and meanwhile let me click here to google yeah i am able to open so google is okay so i am able to open the google do yeah, i am able to open this 176.1600.50 that is a dmg internal since i am not able to open that let me go to http and the public ip 1981814.5 this is the internet server so i am reaching there as well let me check the ping is working oh, you can see so my ping is also working 
so you can see that after doing so much of manipulation after uh, allowing in into the NAT traffic and then after uh, allow that uh, uh, permission rule because by default it was denying everything so after doing all these things it just start working so let me close here next section will do more on the policies let us learn more about the policies and these are the actions that I can take uh, for my policy let me go to my se lab section here you can see that action is allow if I click here then you can see that what are the other options I have I have trust monitor block interactive blocks so here you will get the explanation of all those things if I permit that means I am permitting through firewall but checking against the snort rules if I am trusting then check it against the firewall rules but does not check it against the snort rules so likewise we have the definition for all those things that we have in the action tab now, other thing what I can do I can go to that section and say, uh, suppose if I click here to the move then I'll get this option that move this particular policy that is behind this uh, pain I can move this policy that is the mandatory policy so let me close here this is my mandatory policy and the other policy is the default base policy and if I click to edit if I click to move so I can move that policy to default or I can move the that policy to mandatory that is the policy is already there in the mandatory section then if I have multiple policies I can move up and down that rule okay so these things these options we have now let me quickly go to uh, our agenda for this particular recording I'm going to create one more policy and will show you that how we can move edit delete then I'm going to create policy for my DMZ server because my DMG server that is still don't have access from my internal HQ so HQ LAN I don't have access to my DMZ and the other thing I don't have access from outside this DMG server is hosting HTTP SSH and FTP these three applications so from inside to DMG I will allow these applications and from outside to DMG I will allow HTTP okay and then finally we'll check the logs and the other stuffs so let us quickly move to that section one by one I'll do that so let us do the first thing first that create a rule I suppose I am creating a rule uh, name is block means action I am giving block and let us see what will happen so if I go in the same segment I want to add a rule and you can see insert below rule say block the LAN something if I am giving action as a block my inside as a source outside as a destination then in my network I am using HQLAN as a source for for the moment any as a destination add it so I haven't given uh, the other stuffs uh, like I haven't given the inspection and the, uh, the comments on that so here I have blocked the LAN and uh, this thing is already here now you can see here that uh, if the first policy will match then obviously the traffic will not go and hit the second policy okay that is true and here uh, uh, log is one log is zero okay so that is the one thing now suppose if I want to delete this 
so obviously I can click here to delete button I, I can delete this but I haven't deployed this policy remember this thing whenever you are creating policy you have to deploy to certain FTD in the infrastructure so if you go to the deploy section before doing that let me save this because first of all you have to save this policy then only you will get the option to deploy so if I go to deploy now you you are getting this option to select and deploy it so let me deploy now I am deploying this uh, policy okay so once it is getting deployed let me click here this is 40 percent okay so give this some time to deploy it parallelly I can check my PPT and here what I have done here in this case that I have created one new rule you can see here so I have mandatory base policy I have created one other mandatory HQ policy and then I have this yellow sign that it is telling okay you can't do it your FMC will not allow to do such type of stuffs okay. so first first of all uh, let's deploy it and then I will delete it and then I will create one another mandatory uh, HQ policy okay so we'll wait now it's deployed successfully I can go here now I want to delete it so suppose if I click delete this rule are you sure want to delete this rule yes and the rule has been deleted okay so what I'm going to do now that I am going to create one other mandatory policy and then we'll check that what type of stuffs I will get so let me go and create that so here again I am adding a rule here and this rule I am giving this rule as a into mandatory I am giving the name as a HQ block policy the action I am using again block inside outside the network HQLAN as a source, any IPv4 as a destination, add it. Okay, so now I add this policy and again it has added, no problem. Now I'll show you the uh, power of the movements, how I can move this to into default let me move this into the default now it is there in the default and again if I can click here again I can move back to mandatory save okay so you can see here that I am moving these policies and let me save it first now once I save this policy now you can see that I am getting a warning message what does this warning message is so this warning message is telling this rule is preempted by rule number one so what it is telling that your FMC is intelligent enough that it understand that once you allow the traffic you can't deny in the second statement okay so you know if you create such type of policy so your intelligent FMC will throw an error so let me delete this and now you understand this that what is the use and the impl implication of this policy let me check the deployment so whatever I have altered let me redeploy it let me check I am able to ping or not after deployment uh, let it be the ping will go through let's go back to our slide and the same thing I try to explain here okay
so here you can see on your slide that if td is smart enough to recognize that the rule will not be reached since the rule is in the mandatory base policy comes first and encompasses all that is in the new rule okay. how you can fix it uh, you can delete that rule that's it delete that rule otherwise you have option to edit that rule okay so now in this section let me create two dmg policy one dmg policy from hq to dmg server okay enable into mandatory allow and what new thing we will learn here that uh, what is the dmg server private that we know that we have that so new thing we will learn that we need to add the applications so far we haven't added the applications so that I am going to add. So now uh, let me add a rule into the mandatory section. Rule is LAN to DMG. Allow it. So my source is LAN. Destination is a DMG. Now the network is, so first of all my network is SQLAN and my destination is dmz private now i have to add the applications so here i have three applications one by one i can search the first one is ssh even i can press control and i can select multiples so let me select only ssh and open ssh add to rule now the secondly I can add HTTP so for HTTP you can see how many HTTP we have so let me take HTTP these many rules from HTTP okay and finally uh, let me check for FTP so for FTP we have 25 applications you can see so FTP active data passive okay these four I am taking add to the rule now I'm going to do the inspection over connectivity over secure and the login uh, log at the begin connection log at the end of the connection so beginning log message and end log message will get add this policy save this that is the one rule what is the second rule so let me quickly go and show you the second rule okay second rule is to I haven't added the comment by the way you have to add the comment as well the second rule is that internet to DMG server okay so for that obviously my source is outside destination is DMG then any IPv4 to DMG server private and that is uh, very important so let me do the second task as well and this policy is using below rule what was the first policy that was into mandatory so no problem after the DMG after the land to DMG policy I can add that so let me create add rule and this time say outside to DMG below rule 2 that's okay that, that is selected by default so my source is outside my destination is DMG network is say any that is by default there and the source is means the destination here is DMZ private then I have to add the application in this case I want only HTTP access from outside to inside so I can add this inspection over security login yes I want to log the beginning comments I can add new comment I can add say traffic from outside to DMZ 
okay add it now you can see the policies all these mandatory policies they are building big here and one by one you can see the policies and all these things now here it's zero this is nothing but the log counter yeah login here it is one okay no problem so let me stop here and in the next section uh, we will do verification over this so how uh, it will work or it should work and we'll do the testing so we, we have to do the testing related to traffic from land to DMZ and traffic from outside to DMZ let us do this summary and verification in this section uh, so far what we have done we have created the policies uh, you can see uh, outside to SQ DMG HQ DMG any like this so we have all those mandatory based policies and we need to first deploy this policy so let me click to deploy all these three policy and you know if we have you know, anything wrong in this then obviously we'll get some alert messages some messages that we have inconsistencies in rule or object groups etc so pre-deploy is successful you can see the messages here pre-deploy is successful so it is try to deploy all this policy let it be deploy all this policy and let me and do the constant ping from here so if anything will break this particular sequence will break uh, this traffic is nothing but I am sending packets from my LAN to the uh, ISP or to the internet segment okay now once this will be deployed what we have to do next next will open the Google page will open one of the gambling.com page then uh, I can go to DMG server and uh, I have to open so what basically I have to do I have to open various sessions related to DMG like SSH session uh, FTP session and HTTP uh, session okay so all these things I will do uh, one by one no problem so let me complete these tasks first and what are those tasks let us go to google.com and let us check that still that Google is accessible that is correct let me check that internet is still accessible they also correct so before doing all the those checks let's go to the deployment status let us check that that deployment is 100% successful or not so it is up to the mark okay now I can go to uh, the gambling.com site and let us see that I'm able to open or not invest with us okay I hope the URL is correct okay gamling.com now in the upcoming uh, sessions we'll come to know about this that uh, we don't want to open this so how to block uh, these sites you know uh, all these uh, sites in the corporate network we'll see that but I'm able to open gambling.com no problem on that now what I can do now that uh, I can go to my empty party and from here I have to open DMG inside server and I need to use the username and password so let me put that username and password I'm able to open the DMG server that's okay now let me click to filezilla 
and the host name so what is the IP address for that that IP address is 172.16.102.50 connect server does not support ASCII character retrieving the directive being successful okay so why I am doing all these things because because uh, I have enabled the login parameters so I'll go to the log events and log and check the logs so that's why I am doing all these stuffs so once I am up to that point open file Jilla using the DMZ server via FTP it's okay I have done up to that then I need to open uh, this from the internet server so the next step is to go to the internet server because there also I have one server so let me go there so once I open the internet server so let me click here uh, from here from the internet server I can open the party and the DMG server so from outside you know that uh, I don't have access to the SSH port so from outside whenever I'm trying my system is crashing or something my RDP session is crashing from outside that is one thing second thing let me go to the filezilla so what I am doing now that I am sending a request over say port number 22 over port number 21 to my uh, TMG server so we know what is the IP address so 198.187.50 and let me quickly verify it 198.181.50 okay and that is okay so from outside I'm using this IP user and the password remember from outside to inside what we have done that we have allowed only HTTP connection so this connection will also fail and parallelly if I go and open the web browser so I have this uh, Fire Chrome web browser let me try and open the web page the inside web page is so let me expand it that is HTTP and the IP is 198.18 that, that will be the public IP for my DMG server this is the DMG server so you can see the HTTP session is allowed actually so all these things are there now what next I'm going to do I'm going to uh, go to analysis and then connection and events and will verify the events so let me again go back to my FMC so I logged into FMC and from here I can go to analysis connection and events now we can check our event logs analysis connection and events okay so I just click on to the events and here you can see that what is the traffic uh, from where it is coming what type of traffic it is and we'll get the first packet last packet action reason initiator IP all these things we are getting let me expand this so here is the time period that I can expand that is the one option I have but apart from that you can see the initiator IP who is initiating and the responder IP so 
is actually the outside uh, this 100.250 is my LAN uh, host from there I am sending this traffic so this this traffic you can see I have two type of traffic one is from outside to DMZ and let me scroll and let us check that what are the applications they are hitting so they are hitting HTTP so from outside to DMZ they are hitting HTTP and from inside to DMZ they are hitting FTP SSH okay so you can see all these things now we are very much done with this particular lab section and you can understand now that all these things that we are doing here the policy the use of policy then the use of different parameters that we have used earlier in this section okay these are the policies those are hitting and let us conclude this section the first backend column related to log at the beginning that we have checked in the log setting and based whether you have selected the log at the end of the connection so uh, it that is the meaning of that log at the end means first when you have initiated the connection and log at the end of the connection so it will log those packets now the important thing here that while we are using all these things so wh what we are doing that we are creating the template at FMC and then those templates or those policies we are applying to various FTT in a network so in a way if I have a, a un, uh, what you can say that if I have a standard type of application or solution means if I have some generic rules then what I can do I can use those rules as a template and then I can push to various FTT across my infrastructure so this is one type of reusability that we can use and that is the true power of such type of controller based implementation okay so let me close here and in the next recording we'll start with a new scenario let us start section number four in section number four we have to install the FTD at the remote site one and here you can see in the diagram so whatever our overall strategy is that we need to install it this FTD now we have to install it with help of FMC because what what is happening in this scenario or in this fabric that you can build your policies configure at uh, FMC and then you are pushing towards the uh, FTD now very important thing that when we have installed FTD at the HQ level so at that time they are in the same network or they are in the same LAN but now because this is one of the remote office it is separated via some ISP or some internet broadband now in this case how my interfaces will be exposed to FMC that is one question okay and that will see that how we can achieve that so in this particular scenario we have to install it once we'll install uh, FTD here then we'll create rules for traffic flow from one place to other places okay so let us do the installation first and I will walk you all the step by step uh, installation process now while we are doing this we have four options means while we try to connect the FMC to the FTD at the remote location we have uh, four options option number one that we can use firepower device manager that I'm not going to use in this case option number two that your infrastructure is separated by VPN or MPLS means we have some internal IPs and these IP addresses are known to these uh, devices and then they can communicate option number three that I'm going to use here is that FTD management NIC has some public IP so if you see our topology you'll find that yeah I have two IP address one IP address is for data 
and one IP address is for management. Okay, so that means I need two public IP address to first of all register the FTD to the FMC, and then once they will registered, once they are in the Firepower fabric, then they will get the configuration. But the last option we have that pre-configure the FTD data interfaces, routing policies. So all these configuration you can pre-configure and then you can connect with the FMC and that is not the recommended one. Okay. So let us focus on the step number three that I have two public IP. One is for data and one is for management and with help of that I will configure that. Although this isn't a best practice, but we can do this in this particular lab scenario. In our case, we have two public IP. One is 2.2 uh, and 2.10 uh, exposed to public interfaces. Okay, so let us start this uh, section and let us log to the uh, lab and start the lab. What I'm going to do in the next that we have done in the earlier section and what we have done uh, we log to the FTD at any of the remote location and then uh, in the CL SH in the CLI we are giving the command something configure manager add Cisco 321 now this I have given in the first case when I have installed the FTD at the HQ location but here Additionally, I am using do not resolve and the NAT ID. Why I uh, I am giving this do not resolve? Because my FTD does not know what is the IP address of the FMC. So it will try to resolve the IP address of the FMC. That That is my FTD. That is the remote side FTD. And second thing that you use the NAT ID. So here at the bottom you can see the explanation. The 12345 part is the NAT ID. This will be the unique ID at both the location to identify the NAT. So here also I have given this and in the FMC also I will give this command. So let me log to my FTD. I'm going to log. I am here in the uh, CLISH. You know that. And from here, I have to issue a command, something configure manager add don't say resolve. And this is a placeholder for the IP address, for the public IP address of FMC, Cisco 123. And this is the pre share key. And then I am giving the unique NAT ID. Okay, so once I issue this command, then I have to go to FMC and do the configure. Need to add the device, and once I'll add the device again, I have to give the base policy as well. So all those things I will do. And now, if I type show managers here, you can see the status will be pending. It will show the status as a pending because we need to add this to the FMC as well. Okay, so once I, I go to FMC uh, next time, uh, I have to log to FMC, and here in your screen you can see what are the things I am going to put. So I will put the host name and the uh, display name, pre share key, group, all these things. And once I will do that, then you can see that uh, my FTD will register to FMC. So let me go to my FMC first. And here I need to add the device. So let me first go to the systems. Okay, I, I just click on, on systems. Now what I want, I want to add device and adding device with certain specification. So let me show you that. Uh, these are the things that I need to add. So let me do that. I'm going to uh, devices. Let me go to devices. And from devices, 
you can add so add a device now what is the host name and all those things so let me refer to our topology host is 198.18.2.10 uh, remote ftd cisco 321 like that so let me do all these things this is 198.18.2.10 display name is a remote 1 ftd is cisco 321 group is none at the moment but actually i want a policy so i want to create a policy say remote locations this is my base policy save it and then i want a smart license as malware threat url filtering before registering let me re-verify uh, re here all my steps are correct so this is my host name a host host name key policy and then i have to add the nat id as well so let me add so for that i have to click here to the advanced my nat id is one two three four five okay so now everything is okay i can click register and let me do the registration Okay. So while it is registering, I can go to the deploy, I can check the status and parallelly, once it will registered, then with the help of CLI, what I can do that uh, I can check the status in the show manager. So let me open party here and if I type show managers. It's still it is pending this command is show manager maybe it's not that visible to you but the command is correct show manager so if it will register register it properly then you will find that uh, it will show complete instead of pending here it will show the status is completed so in the first time it will take some time and we can wait for that time it will take four to five minutes but still it is pending uh, it is taking its time so let me go here let me click here to the deploy button so you can check how much time is left what is the deployment status so in the meanwhile what I'll do let me pause the recording for the moment and we'll wait for three to four minutes. Now what happened in this case that I am not able to register this device and then I got to know that my register key was wrong. Actually it was one two three Cisco one two three instead of Cisco three two one. Okay and that's why it was not able to register so let me give the correct key here and you can see uh, all the importance of these key if you give wrong key wrong net id then it will not establish the session so now i have given the correct key that is cisco 123 both sides and now again the uh, add process is on now let us check now you can see that it is tried to register this and successful showing this, this is successful so I'll wait is still it is registering it okay uh, and in this way it'll, it'll come to know that in this way it will be registered itself so let me close here and in the upcoming sessions 
we will learn more about the traffic policies. In this section, I am going to configure the interfaces and will check the NAT rules. As we know that we have two interface as per our topology. We have one interface called gig E00 that is connected to LAN side and gig 01 that is going towards the ISP. So before uh, checking the interfaces, let me go to my FMC and from there. Yeah, from here, uh, let me show you that uh, what is the status of so manager. So from here, if I go and check my deployment status, it will show you that deployment status is completed that we have done in the last session. Now from here onwards, uh, what I can do, I can go to devices and then the device management. So let me click to devices and device management. In device management, you can see I have two devices. One uh, was earlier that we have deployed HQFTD. Other one is the remote FTD that we have deployed. Now here I need to configure the interfaces. So for that, I need to click here on the pencil button. And one by one, I will configure these interfaces. So let's see what are the IP and other stuffs here. So for gig zero slash zero that will be my LAN interface. I can give name as a remote LAN security zone is inside and then I will assign the IP address 172.16.103.1. That is my LAN IP address. So let me do that. Say this is remote LAN interface. Enable this. Security zone is inside, obviously. Okay, then let me click to IPv4. I'm going to use static IP. That is 172.16.103.1 slash 24. Rest we can leave. Okay, so once I'm done with this interface, I need to save this. I'm saving this and then I'll go to the other interface that is the ISP side interface. So this is my ISP side interface. Let me enable it. This security zone should be outside and here I need to give the IP before address. So let us go back. Check what is my IPv4 address that is 198.182.2. Okay. So that will be 198.18.2.2 slash 24. Yes, slash 24. Okay. Again, save this. Now I am done with the uh, interface configuration and already I save this because we have done this configuration at the level of FMC. I need to push this configuration to the HQDT. So uh, sorry to the uh, remote FTD. I have to push there for that. I will deploy that. No problem. I'll do that. So before doing that, I can go to the routing because I need to create one static route towards my ISP. Okay, so for that, I will create one route towards ISP and that will be a default route means any IPv4 means uh, 000 slash 0. So let me click here to static route. It is popping up. I need to add a route. Okay, if I uh, click here, you can see that uh, it is showing that 000 slash 0 means this is a 
uh, default route and interface is ISP side interface yeah that's okay now I need to add a gateway and in this case what is my gateway so you can see the gateway is 198.182.1 that is the public uh, interface I can give name uh, any logical name say remote one FTT default gateway I can give name such as remote say one FTD gateway and then the IP is 198.18.2.1 slash 32 yeah okay save this and then from the drop down menu I can choose that remote one FTT gateway as my gateway and rest everything is fine now I can do OK first it will save to my uh, FMC and then from here I have to push to my remote FTD okay so let me save here first and finally I will deploy it to FTD so up to this step is okay we have successfully created the interfaces we have successfully created the static route okay now before doing uh, before deploying it uh, let's discuss that what else needed so we have create uh, we have the interfaces okay done we have the static route pointing towards ISP done now third before we are going to do the testing at the access control policy because you know that by default we have one access policy and it will drop all the traffic that is the default nature of the access policy we'll check that access policy and the NAT policy to see if you can predict what a ping or URL request from the remote worker station might uh, produce and go to policy control access control and check the access policy so first of all I will check what is our access policy and then I will check what is my NAT policy okay so let me first check my access policy I will go there and check the access policy first and then I'll check the NAT policy okay so let let me go back all these things are saved uh, although we haven't uh, deploy or push to the FTD so before that let me go to the policy access control access policy and what policy I have in remote location policy let me click here to edit this is coming you can see here uh, I have policy and what is the default policy inherit from the base policy I haven't added, added any strict policy so whatever default policy is there let me click here it's showing that uh, it has three policy you can see so it, this this is inherited from the policy that already there in the base policy and two policies are you know in the yellow sign that means they are not functional if I click here you can see what is the warning this rule uses zones that do not include interfaces from any of the targeted device traffic through these devices will never match this rule because I don't have DMG interfaces in my uh, in my remote FTD so that's why these rules will be obsolete there is no use of this rule I can do one thing I can go here and I can delete these rules so no problem I'll delete these rules and other thing other than that you can see I have one LAN to uh, internet rule this is the HQ LAN so so if I check this rule okay so what I can do here that I can edit this rule if I check this rule what I will find I'll find that HQ LAN is the source and any IPv4 is the destination 
that is not our network yeah it, it will come up say because in the HQLAN we have taken 172.16 so this rule will work means I have this access policy and it will work this rule will work yeah definitely this rule will work okay so I have this access control policy uh, that uh, inherited from the main policy so let me show you one more time actually I have two access policy one access policy in terms of base policy that I initially use for my uh, HQ LAN these are the okay just hold on so these are the policies these are actually uh, applicable to HQ LAN now the same policy I inherited here for my remote location and in this location you can see that uh, these two rules are not in use because I don't have these zones so that means this policy will work okay so according to this policy my traffic will go so at the moment I'm not going to edit I'm not editing this uh, uh, will will wait now let me quickly go and check the NAT rules okay. so for that I can go here and I can check the NAT rules so let me go to devices and NAT yeah, it's, it's a bit slow sometimes so devices first let me click devices and then I'll click NAT I have this corp NAT rule let us check this rule and here I have traffic you can see uh, in inside outside HQLAN DMG is not uh, usable here so I have one uh, rule here inside to outside let's check this what this rule is telling or this translation here so HQLAN we know what is the submit for HQLAN to the destination means the NAT rule is also there access control policy is also there that means if I log to my workstation uh, uh, my remote workstation so if I go to any of the PC in the remote one location and if I ping from there to the outside or to the internet or suppose if I surf these sites like gambling or Google or all those sites that means it should work okay so let me stop here because I want to do testing in the next recording so in the next recording we'll do the testing and we'll check uh, where my rules are failing and if we have some issues we'll try to troubleshoot and verify this is the final recording of this particular section where we have to do the testing and whatever things those are left we need to identi identify those things so uh, say after doing all these things means after assigning the IP addresses after um, giving the NAT rule after giving the static route everything still if if I go to my remote office and if I ping to the public address 198.18.4.5 my ping will fail well the reason behind this although I have the NAT policy but if I go inside the NAT policy and if I check the policy enforcement so on the top you will find the policy uh, actually assignment at the moment it it, uh, it is attached so uh, by default it is attached or because we have attached only HQ FTT so that's why only HQ FTT is functional for this particular NAT rule now you have to attach the remote one FTT as well so once you attach this and after that you deploy this I'll come to know that uh, you are able to do all the uh, stuffs means you are able to do the pings you are able to uh, surf the sites all these things so let me first go to my HQ FMC and first of all I will attach the policy so I am here to my HQ FMC here you can see on the top here policy assignment is only one I need to attach remote FTD add to the policy okay 
save this now once it is saved I need to deploy this because this time I am doing changes to my remote one FTD and deploy this and now it is deploying what I'm going to do now that I'm going to open uh, my remote side workstation and from there I will do all the testing so let me open that now I have opened my remote side machine and while the rule is deploying so parallelly now you can see now I am able to ping so initially I am getting the request timeout now I am able to ping now let me open the Mozilla and will open the websites so at the moment I am I, I will be open I will be able to open uh, websites like gambling or triple a dot uh, dot com so here you can see the sites are opening so this is my internet server so able to open this is my DMG server I am able to open this is my Google able to open gambling but remember we don't want these gambling or any any type of such type of sites to be open so in the upcoming uh, recordings uh, we'll see that how we can block these sites with help of URL filtering and all those things okay so yeah this is it finally we have done this section number four see you in the section number five thank you bye bye hi welcome to section number five in this section I'm going to cover that how we can register our FTD from other remote location to the FMC and here in this case we are getting the IP address via ISP means we have this scenario of uh, getting IP from the DHCP server so first of all we'll uh, configure the management plane while registering this FTD to the FMC and then in the uh, subsequent sessions we'll check about the data plane so what what is the use case here uh, if we have this uh, DHCP type of public facing interface uh, so in this scenario uh, we have this site and which is get, uh, getting the DHCP server there is a use case here actually because in the last section or the previous section we have learned that we have a static IP and then how we can register to FMC in this case we have the DHCP server and then we learn that what type of policy and how we will register to the HQ first of all what you need to do here first of all you have to go to the FMC or the HQ segment from there you need to ping to the public IP related to your remote site so in this case that public IP is 198.183.100 now secondly we need some rules and uh, for that I'll show you what rules we needed uh, before showing you all those rules uh, first of all from this FTT I need to log to this FTT and then I have to request uh, for the management plane to my uh, HQ location FMC like this so uh, here uh, you can see that we have difference and what is the difference we have in the last case when I have other FTD uh, here at that time I use the uh, placeholder called do not resolve but in this case uh, I'm going to use simply the pre-shared key and the NAT ID okay and while doing this what will happen if you go and type show manager to the CLI you will get one port number and that port number need to be registered at the level of FMC so that I will show you uh, let me go to the HQ <coughs> and uh, here I need to add a policy so for that I need to go to policies access policies access control click to add rule and what type of rule you want to add 
So rule you want to add is say remote FTT to FMC. That's the name. But what are the important things here? We need to add the zones. So outside is the source. Inside is the destination. So let me go back. A remote. I'll give a name. Any logical name to FMC connection uh, below rule three. It's okay. Now inside is my destination. Outside is my source. So we need to add the source and destination. Okay. Then I need to add the network. Now in this particular network portion, what I have to do? So what will my source? Source is obviously any IP, but the destination is my FMC. So this will be my source, and FMC private will be my destination. Now I need to add the port number. For that. You have to issue one command. The command, let me show you the command. So for that, I need to go to my party session. So let me click to party and show you that command. That command is nothing but show uh, config manager and then the IP address. So let me show you that command first and then I will show you this. Yep, command is config manager add IP address rake key and the NAT ID. Let me click here to show you those commands. At the moment is responding very slow, so no problem. The command is this much, this one, and already I have. Uh, issued that command. So once you issue the command, then you have to type show network and then you have to get the port number because this port number I'm going to use here in the uh, FMC connection. So let me do that. I can go to the ports. I need to add. So click the plus sign here. There's a new port. Then once it will come up, then we'll give the port number. First of all, give the uh, name. Say any logical name. Say FMC to FTD connection. Port number we know that is 8305. Save it. Now next I'll go to the inspection, then logging, then commands. So one by one, I'll do all these steps. Sometimes you'll feel that your FMC is a bit slow. Obviously, that depends upon uh, what is your management link uh, connection speed. So at the moment, it is showing it is a bit slow. But if it is slow, then it is good for us because then we can learn these things slowly. Because whenever you are learning new technology, uh, if you start slow, that will be good. Login and then finally comments. So let me click here to comments, new comment. And then I will add any uh, comment. So let me add comment. Say I will add comment something like from FMC to FTT. So I am good with this rule. Now what will be the next step? Next step is to deploy this rule to the FMC. So for that, uh, I will go to the deploy section and I will deploy this. Okay, so while it is coming up, it's a bit slow here. 
then once we add this then we'll go to the uh, fmc connection i haven't added this in the port number so no problem i will edit this port because okay i have created the port number but i haven't added it so no problem we'll add that then go to the inspection then login then this and then we have to deploy it so let me go back and now you can click to this pencil button that is for edit I can go and click there to the remote to FMC connection and it will come up once it will come up then we need to edit the TCP port number and how we can edit that so whatever port that we have created uh, we need to put it in the destination uh, port it is coming up once it will load then I'll go to ports so I have already clicked to the port it is coming it's a bit slow now we have created this FMC to FTD connection okay and add to the destination meanwhile all these things are a part of a group means uh, a part of object actually so once we are doing all these template configuration I can reuse all these templates uh, for the for the uh, letter use and here in the top you can see that uh, let me just check my internet connection now it's okay so at the top you can see that you have objects I'll show you that objects as well before moving that let me save this configuration because once I save this configuration then only I can deploy it so let me click here to save okay so while it is saving this uh, let's go back to our PPT and what are the next step I have to do let me show you that next step so once I save and deploy it then I have to add the other side FTT that is the remote side to FTT here in the FMC and at that time in the host that will be blank display name I will use and all those parameters I will use here so first of all save this configuration let, let me save this configuration and deploy it and then uh, I'll come back and then I will do this configuration for the registering of the FTT to FMC okay let me go to uh, deploy and let me deploy this rule to the HQ FTT okay so once I deploy this then uh, what next I have to do I have to go to devices and then I have to add the device so that you can see here add device host I can leave it display name is a remote to FTD then the rec key say registration key 3 group is okay uh, the license I can use as malware threat URL the access policy I can use remote location that's okay to me the NAT ID you can see a1 b2 uh, okay so 
these things I have to use. Just let me reconfirm with the rec key. Rec key 3. Because if everything is uh, okay here, then only it will register. Otherwise, it will throw an error. So you have to check all those uh, parameters, all those things. Otherwise, it will throw an error. Okay. So give this some time to register it. And in the meanwhile, let us check the configuration. Okay. So let me quickly walk you through all the steps that we have done in this particular section because in this scenario we are getting the IP address from the DHCP uh, ISP DHCP and first of all we need to check what is the exact IP address that I got in my location then I need to register this with the FMC with the help of configure manager because my manager is the FMC uh, FMC manager and then the IP of the FMC manager and then the register key in the show manager I'll come to know about the public IP addresses and the port number it is using then I need to create a policy and that policy is to register uh, the FTT at remote location to the FMC once I create that policy then I need to save and deploy this policy I have done that I have saved and deployed this policy once I deploy this policy then finally I have to register my remote side FTT to the FMC manager and for that we need to add the devices so at the moment it is adding the device once everything is okay what you will find you will find green okay circle here uh, it and uh, you will find the IP address something like remote to FTT okay so we'll wait till that time and once it will register then we'll move to the next section now you can see uh, here that it is try to register itself and give this some time so it will uh, register itself and uh, let us close here next section uh, we'll see that how we can implement the data plane and the traffic flows as I am done with the management plane configuration I'm going to configure data plane and then we'll do the testing okay then we'll check the reachability towards the uh, ISP or the internet so for that I need to go inside the device and then I have to configure its data plane interfaces one interface that is going towards LAN and one interface that is going towards ISP let me first configure the LAN interface and provide an static IP address so for that I can go inside device management and inside remote to FTD then I can go to gig 0 slash 0 name I can give something like remote LAN enable this interface security zone is inside then the static IPv4 address I can give 172.16.105.1 slash 24 that is my LAN interface we are done with this okay and then save this configuration then secondly I have to configure the ISP side interface that is gig 0 slash 1 now here this IP I am getting from DHCP so I will enable this thing use DHCP obtain default route using DHCP okay so for that I can go to my gig 0 slash 1 name this is ISP side so say ISP side yeah, enable it security zone is outside and then in the IPv4 I'm using DSCP yeah so let us check this you can see none remote uh, ISP side 
outside IPv4 use VHCP. Okay. Once we are done with this, I need to save this configuration. And finally, I have to deploy this configuration to my device. So let me click to the device. I have to deploy here at the remote to FTD. Okay. So for that, I have to go inside the deployer and then I have to select remote to FTD. Deploy this configuration. While it is deploying, let us check the next step. So then you have to deploy. When, once you deploy it, once it is successful, then you can check show route and show IP uh, with help of uh, the CLI of uh, remote to FTD so that will check and then finally we'll check the internet access so let me go back here it will is still in the progress phase so let us give this time to deploy once it will deploy then we'll check the uh, accessibility and yeah we are very much done with this section Seems it is deployed. So let me do the ping test. For that, I I need to go to uh, this device, remote desktop. So before that, let me show you some other things. Let me show you that. What about show route? This, this is the command show route. Yeah, so it is taking the ISP site route. That's good. Then let me check show IP. And you can see this is also deployed. So we are very much done. And finally, let me check show NAT. What is the NAT policy? Do I have NAT policy? Because before NAT will not uh, do whatever we wanted to do. Nothing is there in the NAT. Okay. So that means if I go to my remote side and if I do the ping test or other test, it will fail. So before moving further let me log into the remote side desktop and then i will do the testing i logged in into the remote side system let me check what the ip address first here so i can do ip config and then i can find ip before so let me find that it has IP address that that's correct now uh, if I ping to the uh, ISP 198.184.5 minus 3 and parallelly let me open the web browser And in the web browser also, once it will come up, we'll see that all those sites, although it's tried to resolve, but it is not able to open all the sites. So what we need actually here to do that we need to go inside the policy deployment and we need to add the deployment means we although we have the NAT policy, but we need to add uh, the policy assignment to the remote remote to FTD. Once we'll do that, after that you'll find that everything will work fine. So for that, let me go back to my uh, FMC, and from there I will do this change. I log back to my FMC, and here I go. I need to go inside the devices and NAT.
in this NAT policy I have one NAT policy called Corp NAT and policy assignment you can see only two uh, FTDs are assigned so let me go and add this remote FTD to this policy do OK save this okay and after save we need to deploy this as well so let us go and deploy this change to the remote to FTD while it is deploying the policy let me go back to my remote to FTT workstation and from there we will check what is the result of all these things. Now I log to my remote site and what is the status? Yeah, you can see now we are getting the ping responses and uh, parallelly if I check all these things so let me refresh it yeah reachable I'm able to reach to internet server able to reach to DMG my Google is working yeah and the other sites that I don't want actually to work so in the second part of this course what I will do that uh, will make the policies to filter the URLs and uh, the next uh, part that is the part two of this module or this section is more about the policies informations uh, how we can poly uh, how we can build and uh, different type of policies like filter policy SSL policy VPN policy and plus how we can use API to do all these functions okay although the API part will be less but still I will touch upon the API in the part 2 of this course uh, hi welcome this is the all-in-one lab in this I am going to install FMC at HQ then FTD at HQ remote 1 and remote 2 means whatever we have done so far in this particular course series I am going to do all those steps in this single lab so let's start what I have done I already logged in into my FMC with the username and password and then I have given the time as a manual okay so manually I have changed the time whatever time I have in my uh, local system once the manual time I have configured then I will enable the NTP once I enable the NTP then I'll go and I will save this configuration so here you can see on the top I have this save option let me save that that is the first thing that you need to give the exact time so whatever time you have in your local machine the FMC should uh, sync with that particular time okay. so once the time will be saved it will be set I can again go and check the time so see it is successful let us check the timing here click here to the time and match this time with your uh, local system so 557 566 means almost the same timing we have but you need to sync this timing okay once you sync the time then go to the VMware tools and then enable that feature so let me go to tools you can see uh, enable VMware tools it is already there so that's okay then finally I will go to the licensing part and I'll enable the license but before going there you can see I have uh, options like access list process audit DNS other steps 
management interfaces all these things I can check but let us go to the license first and enable the license in this case I am going to enable the base licensing okay the base licensing is coming with 90 days free trial period okay so let us go to the license and enable the license click to the smart license once I am here I need to register the evaluation mode so I want to do that evolution mode yes now you can see 89 days are left uh, in this particular lab section I'm going to take example for base malware threat and URL filtering so once you use this license by default all these things will be enabled if you want to edit you can go to edit license there are no smart license device currently so I'm not able to edit it okay so this way you can enable the license and that's it this was the part one okay you can say within two three minutes we have completed part one now I'm going to do the lab for part two so for that I need to register my FTT to FMC so let's do that let me open the HQ FTD and where is my HQ FTD you can see here HQ FTD management actually I want management first then the data plan so let us go to the management NIC let me log in first here okay first I log in and then I need to give a path to register to FMC so for that I need that command you, you may know that config manager add IP address and the pre-shared key okay so I have to do that for that uh, I have to log in this first so I am logged in and this is the CLI uh, SH so from here I need to put that command so let me type that one seventy two one six hundred dot hundred and one two three so what command I typed in you can see here let me highlight it configure manager add one seventy two one six hundred hundred that is the IP for the FMC and then the pre-share key enter now once I will do that then I can go to show manager and check the registration pro process so at the moment it will show pending okay so let me do that as well let me type show and then the manager So what command I'm typing here show managers okay and once you issue that command it will show that uh, this registration is in pending status and here you can see the status is pending so no problem let's move further and do the uh, configuration in the FMC now go to the FMC now I need to add this FTT so for that I need to go to devices and then device management then I have to add this so click add add device And then you can give the host as the IP address so 172.16.100.10 is the FTT IP display name is something HQ FTD 
pre-share Cisco one two three. Group is okay none. And here I want to create a new policy. Say something base policy. By default, it will block all the traffic. No problem. At the moment, it is okay. And then all the smart licenses. Okay. And then click register. So it will take uh, some time to register this. This I can go and check in the uh, taskbar how you can check. So this process I can go here to the deployment. I can click here to the deploy green button and I can check this status. You can see the registration registration is on. Okay, so yeah, so it will take some time and once it will register then obviously we'll check that here yeah give this one minute and it will be registered then we'll go to the uh, hq ftt and then again we will issue that command show managers and then you'll find that registration is completed so once the registration is completed then we'll check the deployment section so here you can see that registration is happening. It is coming here. If I click to the deploy. See at the moment none, nothing is there, but no, no problem. We'll wait. Once it will done, then we'll move to the next section. Now next section, what we have to do now, what we have done here, let me draw here while it is doing its job. So we have done the baselining for FMC. That is dot 100. In the same network, I have my FTD. That is dot 10. Now this is configured. Here I need to configure two things. One is the management plane that I am doing at the moment. And then I need to configure the data data plane in data plane we have three interfaces here one is going towards isp one is in the lan interface and one is going towards dmg that means i need to configure three interfaces uh, say gig 00 gig 01 and giggy 0 slash 2 okay so let us do all those things before that uh, go to deploy devices is still in the deploying a state HQFTT so no problem and I'm getting one log message if HQFTT the synchronization demons exist one time the network time demon exists nine so there are some informational messages that I'm getting I can click here to dismiss and this is the messaging bar here you can see the deployment is, is still going on it is 80 percent okay so once it will uh, happen i will get the complete green status now it is successful okay and the message and then the task these are these are the tasks that it has done now what i can do here I, if i click to deploy you will get one FTT. So what happened now that my HQ FTT that is registered here to the FMC. That means you will see here because in future what we'll do that we are going to deploy some policies. So if we deploy some policy where we'll deploy we'll deploy we'll deploy to uh, HQ FTT. We'll see that. Okay, so once I create the policy and then if I go to the deploy, we'll find that uh, all those devices will come up who is already registered. So let us create the data policy. 
okay uh, data policy means that I need to add the interfaces for data communication and for that if I click here to the edit then it is leading through me to the interfaces what type of interfaces we have you can see we have three interface so one by one I, I will go and configure the interfaces so let us configure the interface number one what's the name say LAN HQ enable security zone I need to create that that will be the inside and then I have to give the IP address so you know that what will be the gateway IP address that will be the static 172.16.100.1 and this is the IP address for the data plane okay so everything is okay I can click here to okay and it will write that configuration okay so whenever we are doing these things parallelly we need to save this as well so here in the top I have to click here to save otherwise this uncommitted things will not be saved and maybe in future we'll lose these things now the second interface is gig01 that is going towards the ISP so let's do that ISP side enable this should be security zone outside okay then I need to give the IP address here the IP address is in the range of the public IP address that is 198.18.1 dot one dot twenty four and that is one dot two actually slash twenty four we are very much done here click OK and then save so we are done with the LAN interface with the ISP interface now finally I have to do the configuration for the DMZ okay so let's do the configuration for DMZ there's a third interface so DMZ side enable and now we have the third security level that is the DMZ okay then the IPv4 address that will be in the range of 172.16.102.1 okay so whatever IP address I have used in the entire lab I am using that only and if you have any doubt you can just refer the topology diagram that we have so let me click OK so once I'm done then I have to go and save this and once all these interfaces have been configured now we need to do some static routes so let us create a static route for the ISP side so it is saved now now uh, I can go to routing here in this section and then I need to create a static route towards ISP and the gateway will be so the gateway is important here go to a static route I want to add a IPv4 route click add route and then uh, we have to give the interface so interface I can give ISP let me check that ISP side interface that's okay uh, the any IPv4 means 000 slash 0 
that is also good now I want to add gateway so I can give uh, HQ FTT say default gateway and now I have to give the network so network is 198.18.1.1 slash 32 so this is the gateway that is going towards the ISP once we are done I can click to the drop down menu now everything is ok here I can click ok ok and uh, now this configuration is here I need to save this configuration so on the top and all the time you can see the messages are coming uh, so let me save this configuration once I save this configuration I need to deploy this configuration so for that deployment I can go to the deploy I want to go there now because we have created some new policy so that's why we are getting this option to deploy to the FTD and here you can see the access policy is base policy we have default DNS intuition intuition policy prefer policy network discovery all those things so let us click here to deploy and wait for at least two minutes okay so it will fully deploy this this policy to the remote side and once you deploy this policy means once the FMC will deploy this policy then what will happen that at HQ FTD here uh, if I check first of all if I check show managers because the registration is all already completed so you will get the, uh, you will get the complete message that is the first thing here so that is completed now other things that you can check here that you can check show interfaces you can check show IP so at the moment you can see uh, nothing is there on the interfaces but once the FMC template will be deployed to FTD then you will find the three interfaces uh, inside DMG and outside and if you type show route then you will get the routes as well so here I am able to see the routes and let us click to show IP see so IPs are also there means my deployment is completed so this way you can see that what we have done that we have done the major portion uh, to deploy the uh, HQ FTD so we have registered the FTD and then what we have done that we have uh, created or we have configured the management plane first once the management plane is done then we have done with the creation of the data plane okay now what I am going to do here that uh, let's check that do our traffic is reachable to the uh, ISP DMG or not and it should not because we have one uh, policy that is telling block all that is the first thing the second thing here that we don't have any NAT policy we need NAT uh, policy why because directly my private address can't go to the public address okay so we need those policy to be implement, uh, implemented so if you type to the public address it will be unreachable if you type to the uh, DMG address it will be un unreachable although in the DMG uh, according to our lab section we have some permission we have uh, the permission for uh, FTP server SSH HTTP HTTPS like that okay so from inside to DMG these permissions are there but from outside to inside only SSH session is there okay so we'll check all these things one by one so now what I have to do I have to create first of all I will create the NAT policy over FMC okay after creating the NAT policy I'm going to create the access control policy over FMC and then I will deploy this 
let us create the NAT policy. So for NAT policy, I can go to the NAT and then one by one, I will create the NAT. Here in the NAT policy, what I'm going to do, first of all, I will create a NAT policy from the HQ. Okay, so whatever HQ traffic I have, for that, I will create the uh, NAT, uh, NAT rule. And then in turn, I will create the rule for uh, the DMG okay so first of all let me click here to the new policy that is the threat defense NAT okay and this policy name is something like HQ say LAN NAT I am adding HQ FTD here save this now once I have done that okay now here what I need to do that I need to add a rule okay so one by one I will add rules for all those things and the first rule I'm going to create is a auto NAT and that is the dynamic so dynamic auto NAT the source is inside the destination is obviously outside okay then I need to give the translation so what is the original source and what is the destination here I am going to use the source as a say HQ LAN that is 172.16.0.0 slash 16 and it will cover all the LAN actually it's not only the HQ LAN but it's the corp LAN it's the LAN for my uh, company for my infrastructure so corp LAN has this and this this rule will be used by all the uh, remote sites as well not only with the head office but all the remote sites as well and I need to give some underscore because this space is not acceptable save this okay so Corp land something. Then in the drop down, take the corp land and the destination interface. Okay, so this is the rule that I have created and obviously suppose if I want to edit this rule in future I can go to the edit section and I can edit this rule. There's no problem on that. Now next NAT rule I am going to create that rule V for DMG traffic. So for that the source will become the DMG and the destination will become the outside and there I have to give the uh, translation address as well. Okay, so let me add other rule here. So add rule. And this time this is also auto NAT rule. Uh, this time I'm going to use a static. No problem on that. Then add DMG as a source. Outside as a destination then the translation I want in the translation I will use DMG private to DMG public so this is my DMG private and that address is 172.16.102.50 slash 32 so I need to select DMG private and in the destination I'm going to use the outside address so that outside 
address is that will be my DMG public address. So DMG public and that address is let me click here that is 198.18.1.50 slash 32 okay it's a bit slow it will come up yeah now it is okay I can save this and then I can go to the drop down menu because I need to select DMG public I can click OK and before moving further I have to save this so let me save this yeah I click to the save it is saving this configuration actually I am done with the NAT rule but I am going to add one more rule here for FMC and that will be used in the latter part when I will use the remote to FTT to register to FMC and send the traffic so for that I am uh, creating one more NAT but that will be used that NAT part will be used in the latter part that will be the fourth section that uh, when I have to uh, register my data uh, FTT to to my FMC actually th that is that tool is for the traffic pattern or traffic path so let us do that as well so in that case if uh, I am registering that for my remote location so what will become your source and what will become your destination because this rule I am doing for the remote side so in that case uh, your traffic will come from the remote location okay so in this case my core plan that is the same LAN throughout the network uh, that will be my inside so that's okay so add the inside to the source let me add that and then the outside will become my destination so that's okay so once I'll do that then I need to configure the translation rule and this time my outside remote 2 will come to my FMC so for that I need to give the translation rule so let me go to translation and let me add the FMC I want FMC private address so what will be the FMC private address that is 100 100 so let me check here that do I have FMC private no I don't have so let me add that FMC private and the address is 172.16.100.100 slash 32 save this and then the let, let us select this first okay FMC private and then I need to add the public let me click here to the plus yeah FMC public and then 172 uh, the public address is 198 198.18.1.100 will be the public address save this and again this NAT tool is not going to be used now in section number 2 it will be used in the section number 4 once I register the uh, HTF uh, remote FTT that is my remote to FTT so at that time uh, when the traffic will send at that time they will use this NAT rule so I am very much done with the NAT rule let me save this configuration 
once it will save this configuration let us go and deploy it because I have a new policy so I need to deploy it once I will deploy this policy still you will see that will not able to uh, do the testings other devices will not able to reach why because because still I have one rule and that rule what that tool is telling that uh, access control policy that is telling block everything okay so for that I need to change that rule and in that rule I need to allow everything okay so let's do that so let me go to the access policy and then do that so policies click to policies inside policy we have access control here you can see that I have one base policy let us edit this base policy so click edit and then we need to change this policy now here in this policy you can see that we have these options like add category add rule so at the moment let's add rule and I want to add say so let's give some name so let me give this say LAN to outside traffic source is my inside destination is my outside action I am using allow it's okay then I want to give uh, the source here as a core plan so whatever the LAN I have so that is the corp LAN add as a source and the destination I want to add as a, I can use any as well say any IP before so from here it will go to anywhere okay so use that that only any IP before as a destination so once we are done then we have options like VLAN tags, user applications, application will check ports will check in the upcoming recordings and actually uh, all these things uh, actually in this seg segment because this is all in one lab so here only you will check all these things but in the different section we will check this but if you check our uh, recordings where I have used all these things already okay and this is just for revision security over connectivity let's check the login as well I can add a comment this is for corp LAN something like that any logical things you can add here okay. click OK add this policy once we'll add we need to first of all we need to save it and then we need to deploy it so I can go to the deployment here I have done some changes in policy let's deploy it so once it will deploy now if I go to my ping and you'll find that will will start getting the responses so we'll wait for a minute while it is deploying it and then we'll get the ping responses now you can see I am getting the responses so parallelly if I go and open my sites like my internet server so let me open that 
and the Google and all those things so we are able to do all those things let me show you the, those things first and then we will check the DMG so let's let's do all those things we are getting the ping responses now here I need to add uh, rules for DMG so oh, what I'm doing here if I go to my internet server you can see that internet server is reachable if I click to my DMG that is unreachable because I don't have any rule for towards DMG if I go type Google dot com means my LAN I'm able to go to outside so all these things are okay but uh, I need to create some policies for my DMZ so for that I can go to my access control policy I can add rules here so let me add a rule here this time I am going to add rule uh, from HQ towards DMZ allow it's okay below rule is also okay so what will be my source source is my inside obviously and my destination is DMG network I want to add HQ LAN so whatever HQ LAN I have let me use that and that is the core plan actually corporate LAN that is a source and DMG private is my destination now here you have to add applications so applications I want to add say SSH you can add SSH uh, in this example I have taken example for SSH FTP and HTTP so I can add FTP like this and then finally I can add HTTP as well so let us add HTTP add to the once I am done then I can go to the inspection security over connectivity that's okay login I can ch check box comment I can leave for the moment add it and then finally uh, I have to add one more rule and that rule will be from internet to DMG say from inet to DMZ now this time your source is outside and your destination is DMG network uh, what we can do I can take any as a source and DMG private now here is the catch so from internet to say DMG what should I take should I take DMG private or should I take DMG public okay so because I am doing the NAT translation as well that rule is already there so I can use DMG private as a destination now application in this case from outside to inside I have access only to HTTP and HTTPS so that's why I will use HTTP and HTTPS uh, S only add to the rule add HTTP as well inspection inspection I can give this as a none as well so uh, if you want you can give security over connectivity add this so once I add all these rules obviously I need to save this first and then I have to deploy this so let me quickly go and deploy this so for that I need to go here to the deployment select HQFTT deploy it 
the process is just started so once this process will complete then we will access this private address so from inside LAN I will be able to access to DMG server okay and from outside uh, public address or outside server also I will be able to access to the uh, the inside address as well so all these things I have shown you in the lab so here I will check only this thing that from inside I am able to access to the DMG server or not give give this some time once it will complete then we'll find that uh, we are able to access from inside uh, to this DMG uh, servers now you can see that I am able to uh, access to my DMG server okay so what we have done so far that we have completed section 1 section 2 and uh, these are the major things means once you have all the policy once you have the NAT rule once you have the routing rules all these things are there then installing the uh, remote FTD will be very easy so these section 3 and 4 will be end very very quickly okay so let me quickly go and install remote 1 management and data plane then we'll check the connectivity and finally I'll go and install the remote 2 remember remote 1 is with help of static IP remote 2 is with help uh, with the help of ISP provided DHCP address okay so let us do the step number 3 that installing the remote FTD to the FMC and for this first of all I need to install the management uh, interface uh, towards uh, FMC and all those steps you know already so what I'm going to do here just quickly I'm going to do the configuration and uh, first of all I need to configure the manager let me highlight it so you can also see this configure the manager and that add okay so let me add and we are using do not resolve remember we need two public IP addresses to do that so if you have you know gone through a step by step so what I am doing here configure manager add do not resolve and then the pre-share key that pre-share key is Cisco say 321 or 123 whatever and then the NAT ID 12345 so this is the command I am going to use here now if you type show manager you will find that it is in the pending process because parallelly we need to configure the FMC to get this request so for the FMC side again I have to go to the devices and device manager and I need to add this so let us go to our FMC devices device management and then add this device the host name we know what is the host name of this uh, particular FTT that is the public address display name I can give remote 1 FTD now we need this registration key that is Cisco 123 now here is the important thing that I can use the base policy so whatever policy I have uh, I have created in the previous section I can use it and then I will check all the licenses so let me check the licenses as well even what I can do I can use the base policy or even I can create a new policy and I can give the reference so suppose I will give the name as a remote policy and then uh, this remote policy 
I can select the base policy actually. Okay, so this will inherit the base policy. Once it is done, malware threat URL filtering, check it, register it. So while it is registering and uh, uh, the registration will fail uh, because we haven't added the NAT key. So our NAT key was uh, one, two, three, four, five. That means I have to go to the advanced section and I need to add the NAT key as well. Uh, and the pre-share key will also will be correct. So once these things will correct, then only uh, you will find that uh, this will take effect. Otherwise, it will search for a longer duration and finally it will throw an uh, error message. So let us check what will be the error message that it is going to throw. Okay. So I'll wait for the error message. Now you can see here that I am getting this error message. It is telling that your registration key should match. And let us check that what is our registration key. Is it Cisco? one two three so that registration key is correct I need to add NAT key there so let me go there in the advanced section add the NAT key one two three four five now register it now it will add now you can see in the ba uh, back that it is adding so once this process is done means my remote FTT has registered with the FMC with help of the management public IP. Now next what I have to do I have to configure the interfaces for the data traffic. So next I am going to configure the interfaces. I have two interface one interface is going towards LAN one interface is going towards the ISP. So let's do that one by one. A first interface is gig 0 slash 0. So once it will come up, still it is waiting. Let's configure the interfaces. Gig is 0, 0. Say remote one LAN interface enable security zone should be inside the IPv4 address is static that is 172.16.103.1 slash 24 okay in turn I need to save this as well save this and then secondly I need to configure the ISP side so let's go quickly and configure that as well remote one ISP side enable security join should be outside then the address the address is 198 dot one eight dot two dot two slash twenty four because other side uh, side I have two dot one so this is one nine eight one eight two dot two yeah sir correct save this as well after saving this we need to deploy it and before deploying I am getting one error here what is that red mark error so the deployment is still in process we'll wait okay because that deployment is still in process so once it deployed then uh, we'll go and then again we will push this policy from fmc to the ftd so deployment is done now uh, still I am getting one critical uh, message here alert message. What is that health? Let me go to the message first I'm getting one health alert 
fail to retrieve the status okay but now it is okay now my device is added and i am ready to deploy it so it's it's throwing an error here you can see we have an error but uh, no problem we'll uh, fix that let's fix that error i have inside outside correct and once i have that inside and outside then i need to create one routing towards the isp as well so let me do that as well add routes i know that will be default uh, remote one isp and that will be the 00 route i need to add gateway so from remote one to isp like that then i need to give the gateway gateway is 198.18.2.1 slash 32 because 2.2 is my address then i need to add this remote from isp okay save this and then i need to uh, deploy it because now i have the data plane and now i have the uh, ip as well ip route let's deploy it once it will deploy then we'll ch uh, check the traffic flow you can see parallel the deployment is still going on now what i'm going to do i'm going to log in to the remote site workstation and from that workstation i will check traffic towards dmg traffic towards outside and i will ping and i will ping to the isp so those things i will do but you know that those things will be fail why those things will fail because uh, not only that you have to do this policy assignment but you have to do one more thing here so let me do this uh, first let me show you that what is the thing that you have to do that while you are going to the remote policy clicking edit you need to add so let me expand this first so you need to add the policy assignment and hq ftt add this so we need both this thing there should be added there okay now you can see the policy assignment into now i am going to log to the remote side device and from there i will do all the testing so let me do that i log to the remote side system and let me show you the address here the address you can see uh, 103.250 so if i ping from here to the isp address that is 4.5 everything is correct it should ping to outside because we have done the uh, policy assignment as well and then let me check the ip is correct here yeah. then parallelly i i need to go to the uh, urls and i have to click and check the urls so uh, as this is not happening that means i need to re verify my policies let me check my policies uh, then i'll come and ping this so here you can see that in the nat the policy assignment is uh, only one add this save this i'll check the deployment status deploy this now i'm going back to my uh, remote one uh, workstation let me go there 
now you can see that I am getting the ping responses okay let me go to uh, the Chrome and let me check the URLs I am able to open or not let me open the Google Chrome so so it should be by default there. Let me double click to the Mozilla. Yeah. So all these tabs will become. So I'm able to access the internet, DMZ server, Google, and some gam gambling sites that uh, I have discussed in the section. So I'm very much good with the section one, two, three, and likewise, you can go on and you can check the uh, you know uh, the installation of the remote FTT with help of DHCP IP. How we can register the management and data plane and the rules you don't want to edit more. Only thing you have to remember that you have to add the policy assignment. That is a NAT policy assignment. So inside the NAT, you have to go inside the NAT. You have to add the policy assignment. Once you will add this, then you will get all this uh, ping uh, and the web serving applications. Everything you will get. So I'm going to close here. And this is something like all in one summary. So whatever labs that I have done throughout different segments in this course, you will find all those labs except the remote to installation. Uh, you will find all these things here Hi everyone. Welcome to section 2 of this course in this section I am going to discuss about whatever left in the course number one that will do lots of filtering SSL policies and likewise by the end of this course We'll learn that how we can use the API programming inside the FMC so first of all in this section I'm going to use how how we can filter the URLs and in this case I have to filter the gambling URLs so we may have use case here one case that I may block all the gambling site the other use case that I may block triple eight dot com the gambling site so that is the first the second that I have to push some limitation over Facebook. So how I can limit the Facebook for the remo remote offices, but the HQ LAN, uh, they will, you know, they can access the Facebook. So these are the rules I'm going to uh, build here. Let me first build the gambling block rule. What you can do for this, you can simply go to the, your, uh, to your base policy. And from there you can add one category so this time we are going to add the category initially we used to add the rules we'll add a category say uh, I want this category as no gambling section once we add the category then what I have to do that I have to add a rule inside the category and uh, here I am going to block everything say for my DMG and my inside client uh, to go outside and use the gambling so here in the URL I will search gambling I'll push here in the selected URLs and uh, that means it will block that so once I will create this policy after that what I will do that I will push this policy means I have to deploy this policy I will deploy that policy no problem parallelly what I will do in this particular section that I want to block a certain URL so how I can do that so that I'll, that also I will show you that a particular URL how you can add here you can see that I have to add a rule then add new URL object I have to create this new URL object and then I have to push here in the selected URLs okay and then it will work okay so once I reach up to here then I'll show you that what is this particular slide it is simply telling that you can drag and drop the block uh, URL in the top otherwise what will happen because the first rule is block everything block all the gambling sites so that will that means that uh, this request will never come to block a certain URL so you can do that 
that you can block certain URLs. You can drag and drop this thing. Again, this is again very important. So whenever a user try to use something called say triple eight or any block sites. So at that time, suppose if they are not able to open that particular web page, what they will think that I don't have network or I don't have reachability. Okay, so what you can do that you can set a user or system response that whenever they open the URL from the system, they will get this message that uh, this is blocked or access denied like this consult your system admin. Otherwise, they will get this type of message secure connection failed and they may think oh the connection is not there. Okay, so let us go to our lab section and first of all, I'm going to add a category. So let's do that. So I am here in my workstation. I'm going to edit my base policy. In this base policy, I'm going to add category. The category is no gambling say site. to anyone into mandatory it's okay add this so once I add that you can see I have this no gambling site to anyone now I am going to add a rule here so let us add a rule where I'm adding into category no gambling site to anyone okay and this is block all gambling here the action is block okay and then uh, Jones I can use source as a DMG and uh, insight push here destination is the outside okay now the network network what network I can choose here so network you can choose either you can leave this as a default or you can choose uh, your internal network to the external network something like that okay so network let's leave this uh, let it be like any to any okay if you are very specific about your network then you can use it Otherwise leave it. So let's quickly move to the uh, ports and URLs actually we need to add the URLs here in this category you can search for gambling and it is here add to the rule. Okay, then inspection we don't want anything because everything is blocked. So we don't want over any secure channel logging if I want I can log comments if I want I can give otherwise add this rule so this is one rule that is blocking all the gambling sites now parallelly I'm going to add one more rule that will block a particular URL say uh, block um, www say dot triple eight dot com and I want to block it this is into the mandatory okay uh, now here available Jones now, available Jones suppose if you are not giving anything there is no harm if I leave it like this and simply what I have to do I have to add the URL okay so this this I can leave and simply I will go and even network I will leave and I can simply go to the URL I can click here plus because I want to add a new URL object name is say www.tripleate.com URL we know what is that dot com save it so once I will save it the object name is already X. so uh, this this rule is already missed this object is already there so 
we can search here in my engine maybe initially I have used that tool so that's why the object is there so what I can uh, do here I'll search that object here and once I'll find that object I'll push here in the, into the selected URLs so let me do the search if I type 888 you can see this is my object add this and then inspection we don't want anything why because we are blocking login I can give add okay so I'm very much done with two rules and here you can see what's the order of the rule uh, you'll find that the first rule is blocking everything here and second rule is here so what I can do here I can simply drag and drop this so let me drag and drop this rule to the top in the column I can see now I have this block this so once I'm done with all these things uh, let me first save this rule by clicking save here and then I need to deploy it so here I can go to the deployment section I want to deploy this rule to the HQ and my remote site yeah do it click there and once the rule will deploy give this one to two minute once the rule will deploy then what we'll do that finally we will open our uh, web page and then we'll try to check that do I am able to reach to gambling and do I am able to reach to triple eight now one thing I haven't added here that the HTTP system response okay so once this rule will be done then what I will do I will go parallelly and I will add system response like this HTTP response okay so let's wait for a couple of minute and then we'll do the uh, editing so here you can see that uh, it is deployed successfully now let me go to my web page and let me try this now here you can see still I'm able to uh, surf these URLs and the reason behind this if you check our rules you'll find that uh, my gambling rule is down to this mandatory base rule although the naming is like this I haven't changed the name but what I need to do here this rule this no gambling site to anyone it should be up and this mandatory base rule should be down okay so I need to alter the positions okay and once I alter the position then we'll find that uh, these sites will be blocked so let us uh, do that let us alter the position and then verify it so the easiest thing to do this is that click here to edit in this policy click here to the move and then move this into default so let me move this into the default now here you can see in my default policy let me scroll down now this is in the default so in the mandatory base policy no gambling site to anyone like this now it's okay let's uh, save this first so whatever changes that we have done let's click here to deploy so this alter of the policy we have done and let's deploy it once uh, it will deploy then again we'll check the traffic flow so once it will be successfully deployed then you'll find that we will not able to serve these URLs give this one to two minute so it will 
uh, run or push all the configuration to the FTD. Now once the rules are deployed, if we go to our sites, now they become unreachable now. Okay. So they are unreachable. Now what, what I have to do parallelly that let's edit the rule that is uh, block 888.com. Let's do it quickly. So what I want here in this particular section that uh, it's okay. So what I want for this particular category that the HTTP response, okay? It should be system provided, save it. Go to the rules. Again, deploy it. And you have option that where you are going to deploy it. Once it will deploy, then again, we'll try to serve the uh, gambling sites and then we'll check what is the difference, okay? And that will complete our section number one. Uh, that is to block the gambling sites. In the next section, we'll learn about the Facebook blocking. Seems the deployment is done. If you want to check the triggers or the events, what you can do, you can go to analyze connection events. And here you can see that this particular URL is blocked while it tried to serve the triple com. Okay, that is my HQFTD. Okay. So if I go again here, if I go to gambling, now you can see access denied and consult your administrator. Let us close here. Let us continue our discussion. And in this section, I have to block facebook.com for the remote sites, not for the HQ office. So how I can do it? Uh, first of all, I will go to my base policy and then I will edit my base policy. I want to block the social sites. So first of all, I will block all the social sites. Okay. And then see this blocking is for my head office. Actually, this, this is in my base policy means base policies are inherited by both the HQ and the remote locations means once I create policy here, automatically it will uh, be placed in HQ and the remote locations. Now what I will do that I will go to the HQ policy and there I will add one facebook.com URL on the top of block all the social sites. Okay, so that will be applicable only for the HQ location. So you can see that then I'll go to my HQ policy. I will add this Facebook rule once I add this Facebook rule, then then what I will do that uh, I will place this rule on the top of the default rule that I have done for the gambling sites. So let me do this. Uh, let me go to the FMC. I am here to my FMC. Let us go to the policies. First of all, I am going to edit the base policy. So let's click here to the base policy. I am going to add a rule. And this rule I'm going to add to block the social site. Now before adding this rule, I, I want to insert this rule say into default. to block social sites, okay? And the permission is to block it. Then I need to select the source and the destination that I can leave this as a default. Network I can leave as a default. Then I can go to the 
URL here in the category I can search for social social network I can add this rule now because this is blocking I don't want any inspection let's add this so once I add this rule if I scroll down I added this inside the default policy here so what will happen that this block social site will actually not work why because I have this policy on the top of this block policy which is telling that you have to you can allow all those traffic that means I have to put this block social site on the top of this LAN policy okay so before doing that uh, yeah we can do that and then uh, I will save all these things and then I will create the Facebook policy okay so let's do that we, we know how can uh, we'll do that simply drag and drop okay so uh, it's like fonts are a bit smaller now you can see block social site is on the top of the LAN I can save this policy this block all social sites I want to deploy to my HQ and the remote so this policy will be deployed for these these uh, places and then what I will do I will go to the HQ policy and inside the HQ policy so now you can see uh, the uh, pushing is going on inside the HQ policy I will permit the Facebook okay so if I permit that then we'll see that uh, it will allow the facebook.com okay so once this rule will get deployed what I will do that from this particular HQ device I will try and log Facebook try to access Facebook and we'll see what what will happen okay so let's this deployment complete and then we'll check the Facebook access from the HQ and after editing the rule again we'll check now you can see the deployment is done let's go to facebook.com you can see the access is denied uh, let's check the other social site something like twitter.com <coughs> Okay, I haven't got any message for Twitter, but you can see that uh, it's not able to access Twitter.com. Say, for example, uh, YouTube.com. Now, YouTube is very much accessible. Okay, so Facebook is gone now. Now what I'm going to do, let's go back and uh, create one more policy this time and that will allow, so that will allow the Facebook. Let's go to SQ. In SQ, I want to add a rule and uh, what are the default rules here? You can see all the, because all these rules are doing the property of inheritance so you can see the mandatory base rule let me show you that mandatory base rule what is inside mandatory base rule I have rule 1 and 2 that rule no gambling to anyone is there that is blocking all the gambling sites then I have mandatory HQ policy what is there in the mandatory HQ policy let me click and explore this let me go down let me click here scroll it down mandatory HQ policy I have these two rules okay and what is there in the default policy because the new social site is there in the default rule so let's check that here uh, 
this is there in the default okay so now what I'm going to do here that I'm going to add a rule here to block the Facebook but uh, Facebook is already blocked here so I am going to add to allow the Facebook here and where I can do that see here I have lot many policies so let's show you the policy one by one so first of all I have this gambling policy so it's okay this order is okay for gambling then I have some policy something like HQ land to DMG internet to DMG now this rule that I am going to build that is from where to where that is from inside LAN to outside okay means I have option that I can uh, build that policy on the top of this or I can build, build the policy on the top of the uh, default rule so both options I have okay and we can edit the, these access policy rules very easily so that is again one criteria that you can learn here now let's go and add rule this is something allow Facebook dot com I want to allow it and below rule ever rule all these options I have uh, let's put this in the default okay allow it the inside to outside then the network I can leave it this network but if I want I can give the network as well so the network is my uh, corp LAN I can add this as a source and destination is any but if you want you can leave it now I have to add the URL and I have to add new object URL so say permit Facebook dot com Facebook dot com and uh, Facebook is not using www means if you type Facebook dot com it will automatically redirect to www Facebook dot com so that thing you have to keep in mind anyways this uh, name I should I should not give a space there okay so now I can search for a URL and that URL you can see permit Facebook add this yeah because I'm going to allow this so I want to do it connection over security yes I want to log as well if I want to check the logs add this rule so once I'm adding this rule let's see that where it is adding in the list so it is adding in the list in the default HQ so if the rule will process from top to bottom and that is the order so first of all this will come here and then it will go down that means the sequence is correct let us save this and uh, deploy it where I want to deploy it obviously I want to deploy it over HQ so let's deploy it over HQ and once this will de uh, deploy this rule then uh, in turn what we can see that uh, we are able to access Facebook but if I go to any of the remote location and try to access that uh, this will fail now once the rules is deployed so you can see here uh, if I go to the analysis connection events now you can see that I am able to access to facebook.com the permission is allow okay and I'm able to access to that uh, so let me quickly show you the policy in summary what policy I have in the HQ and now the policy is growing big you can see that uh, I have so many policies now I can shut down these policies 
just to show you that you can cre still create the chain of policies and all the policies has their own effect okay so traffic wise we can create the policy and it will do its work okay so let me stop here and in the next section we'll learn about ssl policy configuration in this section i am going to show you that how we can create the ssl policy and we need ssl policy because nowadays due to these security concern everywhere we want some digital sign certificate whenever we are opening the websites so we want this secure socket layer security uh, everywhere that's why we need to learn this ssl configuration policy now what we can do here that uh, we don't have ca server or uh, certificate authority to sign the certificate so that's why i'm going to create my local ca server so fmc i'm going to create the ca certificate authority and how you can create you have to go to object and object management and then pki and then internal ca uh, you have to create that internal ca what are the steps let me show you that so once you are creating the internal CA, then you have to generate the certificate authority. So you have to generate like this and then generate the self-signed CA. Once we'll generate the self-signed CA, then we'll download it in the download folder. We'll save this with some password like this. Okay. So once we are done with this internal CA certificate, then what I want to do that uh, I have to go inside policy access policy and the SSL and there I need to create policy now this time I need to create three policies so this is the one policy what is the meaning of this particular policy that uh, okay I want to create SSL uh, MITM policy man in middle uh, attack policy and first of all you have to add this policy once you'll add this, this policy then you can add a rule okay so first uh, create the new policy like this and then in this new policy we'll edit that policy so how we can edit that policy and what are the parameters we are needing here that uh, we can give the name the action will give decrypt and reassign we are using uh, the CA internal CA as a FMC as a CA then here I need to define the zones I need to define the network okay and be careful while defining all these things so once you define the zone once you define the network then we are very much done with this particular base certificate but there is one catch now because we are signing this reassign FMC certificate as a CA certificate I need to add two more certificate one certificate is from FMC to FTD because remember I have two use case here for FTD I have FTD 1 and FTD 2 FTD 1 the IP address is unresolved FTD 2 my FMC don't know what is the IP address of the uh, remote site 2 okay so that's why uh, we need to create two more policies one policy that will outgo from FMC so let me show you how FMC outgoing do not decrypt and the other policy that FMC incoming okay the values will be the same but I need to create uh, outgoing and incoming so this is the outgoing then the incoming policies then once I'll done with all these things I will I have to add this SSL policy inside the access policy so again I will go to my base policy and in the advanced section you are able able to add this policy like this SSL policy setting and you can add this policy okay so these are the steps once we'll do all these steps then I will go and uh, uh, do the testing so let me do this a step by step let us go and create or generate the CA internal certificate so let's log to our workstation our data center FMC 
let me go there and uh, I need to log there so let me log to FMC and then we'll generate all these certificates I'm logged in let's go and create the internal CA go inside object then object management you can scroll down because we need a PKI called internal CA now here I need to generate a CA and this name I can give say FMC as CA name I can use a street I can use as in our PPT you can use the same and then the common name we can use so say as a CA now once you do all these things then you need to generate a self uh, CA self sign CA so let's do that let's click to generate it once it will generate this then what we can do that we can go and we can check this okay so click here to edit FMC as a CA and be very careful about the timings so from which time to uh, which time it is valid okay so once you check that thing then what you can do you can download it to the download folder so let us download it and I am using a password as ABC123 in a small so it is downloading it let's check the download folder it is in the administrator download okay so we are very much good with this particular step that it has already downloaded now what I will do uh, according to our discussion let's uh, okay this now I need to create the SSL policy okay so for that what I can do here I can go and uh, I can go to the policy and I can create the SSL policy okay so let's quickly move to the policies okay so let me click here to the policies first and I want you can see SSL policy now at the moment you can see that I do, do not have any policy I want new policy let me create new policy and the new policy name I can give say SSL uh, policy do not dec uh, decrypt is by default is there what I can do now I can save this policy and now what I can do here let's go inside this policy first here also you can see like the base policy we have add rule add category so in this case I want to add a rule so let me click here to add the rule and this is the first SSL policy I'm going to create okay in this add rule I can give the name so let's give the name of this say uh, SSL and MI say TM something like that action I'm going to use decrypt and reassign and from where from my FMC as a CA okay then insert into category standard rule that is okay and here also I need to check this replace the key only okay so once I I'll done with this then what I have to do that I need to add the Jones so inside and outside I will uh, add this so let let me add the direction from inside 
to outside once I'm done with this then I'll go to the network and in the network portion source I will take as a example corp or in our case that is a core plan so I will use as a core plan source and destination so let me use source this destination I can use any IPv4 because destination may be anything in that network okay so once we are done with that then uh, it's optional that I will create the login parameters uh, so let me go and create the login parameters as well okay but those things are optional that if I want to log I will I will do and log that so let me go here and log this say end of the connection so I'm very much done with this particular rule and let me add this rule because after this we need two more rule one rule I want in the FMC outgoing direction so let's add this rule first it's done okay now again I, I have to go and add some rules so let us add one rule that will be say FMC uh, out going here the action I will use do not decrypt um, enable a state is enable and I want this into the category of uh, say administrator rule okay so once I done with this then I, I need to add a zone so because this is my outgoing rule so source I will add as a inside and destination I can leave because it may be uh, any okay that's correct now uh, we need to add a network network what I'm going to do here I'm going to add uh, this network as a FMC as a source network so let's add here in the source and yeah and we are very much done with this section so uh, the finally I can add the login criteria and we'll add this once I done with this then I uh, want one FMC incoming rule as well so let's do this quickly add and then again I need one more rule that will be say FMC incoming here also will use into category administrator rule do not decrypt and because this is the incoming so from outside it is coming to inside that means my outside is inside means destination is inside like this in the reverse direction parallelly here as well in the network also I need to add FMC private to the destination okay then I will log let me go here to log and add this rule okay so so far we have done all these things so far we have done actually four things first of all I have created FMC as a CA with the self sign certificate then I have created three rules one rule is that is the general rule for SSL then I created two extra rule uh, because we know that we have different type of remote offices one is FMC uh, outgoing one is FMC incoming okay so once I'm done with this then this particular SSL rule I need to add in the base policy so let us save this rule first let us go to the policy here I have my base policy so what I will do I will go to the edit and in the advanced section I will add this go inside the edit here we have the advanced option go inside here in this I need to go to SSL policy setting so click here to SSL because now we have the SSL policy 
and what SSL policy we have we have SSL MIMT policy okay and then we'll click okay okay so this way we have add this to the base policy now finally we need to deploy this to all the places okay so let's do the final step as well click to deploy at the moment I have configured one head office and one remote office and this remote office is something uh, which has the uh, static public IP I haven't added the uh, remote office with the DSCP address okay so I have one FTT at SQ one at remote office let's deploy it and we know that in the deployment phase it will take some time so we will wait for that time here you can see the deployment is in progress so let me close here uh, what was the purpose of this particular section I have done in the next section will do the testing of these policies as we are done with the SSL policy let us verify it now for verification what I need to do here that I need to install the FMCCA that the uh, root certificate as a trusted CA into the computer and then I have to install it into the browsers okay so this particular section uh, I have to do with the root certificate and then I have to install in the browser okay so at the moment if I go to HQ let me log to the HQ workstation and let me surf google.com let us see that what type of message I am getting let us open browser here and type google.com and I am getting this advanced option so what option I am getting that attackers might attack uh, password message credit cards uh, net error that I need to sign a certificate something uh, certificate error I am getting now it is telling that you can issue FMC as a CA this is the start date uh, this is expiry and this is the start date okay so we are getting this uh, error message here if I reload this advanced that means that I need to load that certificate uh, that certificate authority both in this local system and then uh, in the browser okay let me check the same with the Mozilla as well so if I go to Mozilla and if I go to my Google that is already there if I reload this I can go to advance okay now we have the invalid security certificate okay so let's let's do all this process and let's add this certificate uh, one by one uh, before doing that let me quickly go to my PPT and what steps you need to do okay install the FMCCA certificate into HQ how we can do that so all these steps are there I will upload this file uh, with this particular video that you can go through it now what I'm going to do here I will let you know that in the FMC how we can do all these things okay but this document is there for your reference you can use that now what I can do that I can go to my download section where I have downloaded that file and from here I need to install so you can simply right click here install the PFX once you install the PFX uh, button you click that then you will get this next option simply read it go to the next go to the next then we are getting one path here and this path we have the note as well and it is telling that what is the certificate file formats simply do next and do next here no problem the password remember we have used ABC in a small and then one two three exclude 
all the extended properties so that's okay then we'll do next here now uh, where you want to store this certificate now we have option to store this certificate so i want the manual location suppose i can browse and there the selected certificate is store actually i want to store it in the personal directory okay so okay now we have that path do next once i am doing next now i am getting the summary wizard and what it is telling that completing the certificate import wizard this the certificate will be imported after you click finish and the file name you can see here this is the file name so what i will do i will finish this okay so let me click here finish now i'm getting one message that the import is successful okay now let us close this now next what i will do that i will go go to uh, cmd i'll go to mm C uh, that CMD is I see no problem. I'll go to my command prompt. I'll type mmc dot exe. Okay, so this is the way that I can actually install this certificate in the local or in this uh, computer. Then what I have to do? I have to click here to the file, and in the file section, I have this option called add and remove snap in click there so if i go inside add and remove snap in then you can see that i have option for certificate okay so what i can do here i will add this now it is asking that where you want to add do you want to add to uh, your user account service account computer account in this moment i will take my user account that is by default there click finish now you can see here that this section is coming where I have added this certificate to my user account I am very much okay with this let me click ok here and now the console and the console root now I, I can expand this so what path actually I want I want to go to console root then the certificate so where is the certificate let me check <clears throat> the certificate uh, i i should have the folder called certificate inside the personal so i am inside the console root personal certificate okay and once you click inside the certificate then you will see the things you will see fmc as a root ca okay so if i click here to fmc as a root ca and even i can open this just just to verify this that uh, what is this certificate and what are the details what is the path so all these things i can check here if I want to know the details so if I click here to the details you can see the details of it version serial number issuer subject valid up to if I scroll it down then the other parameters okay so what I want to do here I want to copy this thing okay so let me copy this to file Okay. Now again one new wizard is coming and this wizard is to export the certificate. So now I am going to export this and I am going to access this wizard step by step. So first of all click next. Once you click next then I have option that yes export the private keys. No do not export the private keys. I will choose the default action that is do not export the private keys let's do next here now here we have the options so any of these certification options will be okay let us choose I'm going to choose this cryptographic message syntax pkca7 include all certificates in the certification path 
if possible okay and then I will click next so let me click next here once I click next then it is asking for the location so the location I will browse and then I will give the download uh, downloads location so no problem we'll do that here it is asking for name so I'll give name something like FMC cert save this once I save this again I am here to the next wizard so what I will do I will click next to complete this let us click here next completing the certificate export wizard you want to finish yes I want to finish it once I'll click to the finish then it will show me the success message yeah, export was successful okay uh, still we have this detail option so what I can do that I will click OK to the detail option let me do OK now uh, we are very much done here up to this point uh, let us close this MMC so let me close this save console setting to console that I don't want because uh, I will not open it again so we are very much done the part one part one we have successfully exported this certificate okay now what I am going to do here I am going to add this into the Firefox this certificate so how to add this again this is not the uh, FMC type of thing this is a thing that in the normal certification adding process we are using all this process okay so let us click here to the menu and once you are there at the menu then we have this uh, option here in the option we'll check the options and you'll we'll find that where we can add the certificate so for that I need to go to the advanced here you, you can see we have this certificate option now certificate request select one automatically ask me every time so I'm going to use the default one and then query uh, OCSP responder say so let us click here to the view certificate let me check the view certificate because in this view certificate in this authority I want to import and what I will import I will import the certificate that we have generated here in the download section that is the FMC cert let's import it and while we are importing it it is asking some questions so what questions are you have been asked to trust a new certificate CA do you want to trust F FMC as a CA for the following purpose trust this CA to identify website yes trust this CA to identify email user yes trust this CA to identify software developers yeah so I am very much done with all these steps and then I will click OK once I click OK in the authority uh, let's check in the authority that our root CA is there or not that is FMC as a CA so let me scroll down here even if I type if firepower security services so uh, let us find that you can see here FMC as a CA let's click to view FMC Corp uh, uh, starting expiry all these things if you want to check the details even you can check the details as well okay so let us close this we are very much done with this particular step uh, let's click here to the OK uh, we are done with this uh, importing that certificate to my Mozilla security system now what I can do here that again I can go to my cisco.com or google.com so google.com 
you can see now this is bypassing the traffic now this is done now the same if I go to my Chrome and if I refresh this session so the Chrome is not able to pass this because it's still in Chrome we don't have that CA certificate signed by the FMC or by the root so that's the thing now suppose if I open say cisco.com for the moment let's check that let me open in the new tab cisco.com so it is try to establish a secure connection my network connection is a bit slow today still try to find that in the meanwhile it is try to resolve cisco.com it's not able to reach that due to some proxy setting no problem uh, in the meanwhile what we'll do we'll go to the FMC and here we can check the events so I can go to the analysis and here connection and the events because in the rule we have logged those things so if we check the events you can see SSH SSL block 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 okay so we are we are hitting those things uh, HTTPS inside outside port number 443 Cisco gambling those are by default there business like that okay. so now my SSL certificate is blocking all these things and now you can see that how we can create the certificate all the uh, three type of uh, rules that we have created related to SSL policy then how we can import those certificates and finally how we can import that certificate to a browser and then finally we can check the events
In this section, I'm going to cover malware and file detection configuration. Now we don't want this malware virus, these executables in our company. So what is the use case here that I have to create three rules. Uh, one rule is to track all the office documents. So here you can see that business requirement require that all downloadable office documents will be inspected for malware. So whatever I will download will be inspected. Then any office document being uploaded to the internet be permitted out and logged. So whatever I am going to upload, it will be logged. And thirdly, no executables be permitted upload or download. So for upload and download, none of the executables are permitted. So these three rules I want to create. Okay, so I will create all these rules one by one. Now how we can create this rule? Again, I have to go inside the access uh, control and then I, I need to use this time malware and file rule. Once I will create that new policy inside that new policy, I have to add rules. So here one by one, I will add three rules. Okay, so one rule just to track it, one for download, one for upload like this. Now here one note we have that while we are setting the action. So what are the options we have for the action action? Either we can detect and generate a log. We can block based on the first uh, 1460 bytes. Then we can send the files to the cloud. And uh, that will generate a log or we can block those files. So after sending to the cloud and uh, after analysis, if it will find that, oh, the files is not good, then it will block it. Other options that we can do Sparrow analysis for MS EXC and dynamic analysis. So all these options we have in the action tab. Okay, so let me quickly go to my FMC and let us create that rule. So first of all, I need to go to policy. Inside policy, if I click here, you can see that I have this malware and file. Now, first of all, I need to add new policy. I'm going to add new policy, say malware data prevention loss policy that is my core policy save this now once i save this policy inside this policy i want to add rules so let me click here to add rule now these things are important so from here onwards we need to check all these things one by one according to our policy so the application protocol is any that is okay the direction of transfer this time I am going to create a rule for download action. I can use uh, block malware and then you can see that in block malware what type of things I have. So reset the connection local malware analysis these things now store files. Yes. Uh, for malware. Yes. Unknown. Yes. Clean. Yes. I need to check out all these things. Then once I'm done, then here what I have to do in the file type that I need to choose my office document. Add it. OK, so I'm very much done with the rule number one. Let us save this rule. OK, and now I want to create one other rule. This time I want to create a rule for upload. OK. So let's check all the parameter for uploading the file. Okay. So what I can do here, the application protocol is any. The direction of transfer is upload. I want to detect those files from the stored files. Correct. And this time what type of files I have. That is my office document. 
add it save it finally i want to create one rule and that will simply block the block all those executables so again add one more rule here yeah any to any is correct this time i want to block the files uh, reset connection that's correct and this time i have this executables add it save it okay we are going good now save all these rules here let me click here to edit so i can show you all these rules so one rule is for download one is for upload and one is for executable okay so we are very much done here now i want to deploy it suppose if you click here to deploy you will find nothing why because you need to deploy this in a certain access policy rule so for that you need to go to your base policy first of all go to your base policy yeah in this base policy where i want to apply it i want to apply it inside lan to internet traffic so for click here to edit here what i have to do i have to click here to inspection and in the file and policy let's click and you'll get this malware dpl policy that's okay that's correct save this now we are very much done with this rule now i'm going to deploy it let me deploy this and check the devices so uh, hq and the remote sites click deploy and if you want to check the status of this deployment then you have to click here to the green button and you will find that deployment is in process so let me stop here and in the next section we will do the verification for this particular rule as we are done with our policy let us quickly verify it now for verification what i can do here i can do i can go to my uh, outside server so let me go to my outside server here i have this temp directory so from here let me download the office file i'm downloading it let me download any of the exe file now if i am downloading exe file you, you can say that it is throwing an error because for exe file we have policy that is to drop that okay apart from that let me open the filezilla from this filezilla let me connect to the internet server via ftp now from here to be uploaded what i want to do let me upload one of the office file so already there let me overwrite it and the transfer is successful okay so what i have done i have downloaded i have uploaded i have uses i use one exe download uh, that is failed so now let me go to my fmc event logger and from there let me check that do i have events for that so for that let me go to the analysis first from analysis i'll go to files and then the file events if you go inside file event then you will find that number that is there so here you can see the event counts because i have used that in previous as well so that's why the event uh, is there and let me parallelly refresh this okay so generally we we want to refresh and check this so the event count is okay so whatever rules that is hitting we have the event counts and here you can see the category say office document type new office disposition unknown action malware cloud lookup action block action detect so all those actions that we have configured already you can see here let me close here and uh, uh, i will see you in the next session
Now we'll discuss about the intuition policies. This particular section is actually the informational section where we'll get information about how we can create the uh, custom made intuition policy instead of using the default Cisco intuition policy. So far what we have done for all our policies, we have used security over connectivity and that is the default intuition policy that we have used. In this section, let us discuss that how we can create our own intuition policy. And this policy, say for example, I am making for DMG. Okay, so how you can do that? The first step is similar that we are doing for all these policies. You have to go inside policy, access control, intuition. Once you are there, then you create one of your policy with providing the name of the policy like this. So say DMG server intuition policy drop when in line. Okay, that is checked security over connectivity. It's okay. Create and edit the policy. You have to choose here create and edit the policy. Once you go to that edit uh, dashboard or edit, then what you have to do click to the rules, select Linux because DMG has the Linux server and then you can select all these rules. Okay, once you select that, then again, what you can do here, go to the rule estate, drop and generate the events. Once you will do this, then you will find that you will get one pop-up message that will tell, okay, successfully set the rule estate for 66 rules. Okay, so that is very much done with the DMG part. Now I will commit the change. So here, commit the change and you can uh, give the description for the change. Now what will happen in this intuition policy is that over the time period of your network, Okay, so by default we have used the Cisco default that, that is the security over connectivity that thing we know but if we are using our own then what will happen? Uh, these are the important as they can possibly improve the efficiency of next generation firewall devices while at the same time better targeting those rules that best apply for the customer network. So if you know what are the security policies or what are the different policies for your customer, then we can better edit this policy for customer environment. And that is very important. That said, that next generation firewall device need time to learn the customer network. And it's, uh, you can think this uh, very much similar to like QS policies as well. Whenever we are applying QS policy, to the customer environment, we need to learn what are the traffic, what are the traffic patterns they have, uh, what is the loss, latency, jitter, priority, all these parameters we need to learn. And then uh, only we can provide them best QoS policy. Likewise, we need to learn the customer network and then we can use this. And that is for sure that if we are using our custom mid uh, intuition policies or info, intuition services, then that will be better than the Cisco default one. That is a, a security over connectivity. Okay, so once I have that rule for DMG Linux server, now I'm going to create one other rule for my corp network. So likewise, you can create one other rule for corp. Uh, you can go to create and edit. Now you can give what what is the network and for which network you want to learn the intuition rules. So you have to give that network. Let me show you that uh, what is the output come with that. So here you can see that it will ask you these things that what is the firepower recommendation. If you go and click advance, then you will give the network that that is for this network. I want to learn um, the intuition rules here. You can set the uh, parameter by default. You will find this medium and then finally if you click here to generate and use the recommendation, then you will get the recommendation. Okay, so uh, you will get say it's very important here that firepower recommendation rule configuration firepower changed 17467 rule estates for six hosts so once they will find how many hosts are there in that uh, uh, network that we have provided they will you can see they are changing this much 
number of rules and that is huge okay so you will notice that change the firewall recommendation it is modifying over 17000 rules from the factory default rules in the security over connectivity intuition policy okay so that is really important now once we have that rule built we need to apply that rule so for that i have to go inside the access policy access control and i am going to change my hq policy so what i want to say here that you can go in this section because you want to change it so you can go to this say let me scroll let me go back to the policy so i can show you the hq policy because in hq policy i have one policy that is uh, say internet to dmg okay so i can go here to internet to dmg and then here in the inspection once i have that inspection rule built it uh, here in this uh, intuition policy okay so instead using the default i can use my own something like dmg server intuition policy i can assign that policy there and i can save okay and then obviously i have to save and deploy so this way you can go to internet to dmg you can use dmg server intuition policy you can apply you can save and we are very much done okay so this is just for your reference this particular section because this need lots of learning about the customer environment customer traffic customer rules all those things and then only we can recommend the intuition policies for the customer in this section we we'll learn about the platform setting and platform setting we are going to do some settings related to ssh smtp and syslog buffer so let me show you that how we can configure this at fmc and one good thing about this type of configuration that we know that we have our management engine at the rate of fmc so once i will create all the configuration template at fmc i can push those configuration to n number of ftds okay so that is the overall management that we have and it's very easy that we can done all these type of platform setting and then finally we can push uh, down to the other ftds so let me go to my fmc and from here i need to create the platform setting so that i need to first go to the devices and then you can see i have this platform setting now in this particular platform setting what i want to do that uh, so devices and platform setting let's go there i want to create new policy and that policy is for threat defense setting let's do that and here because i have deployed only one remote site so that's why you are seeing only one remote site i can give a name here say uh, corp network platform setting something like that you can give any logical name at the moment i am not going to add these uh devices into the policy let's save this configuration so click here to save now once you save this configuration then you will get this uh section where i can do uh, stuff related to banner http icmp secure cell smtp syslog like that okay and here you can see the policy counter is zero so let us create banner first let me type here banner once i'll type uh, once i'll click here then i can go inside this banner and i can give say corp internal network 
do not enter something like that okay let's save this once i'll done with the banner then next step that i have to create policy for my secure cell let's click to the secure cell and then here i have to add the policy so let me click here to add now it is asking for IP address and we have this drop down menu what I want to do here I want to use this for my corp LAN this policy secure cell policy and then the selected zones or zone is my inside that is my corp LAN is there okay so once I am done with that then let's click OK here and I'm done with this let me save this parallelly once I'm done with that then I'll go to SMTP server let me click to SMTP server now it is asking that what is the primary server IP address again I can give my primary server IP address as say DMG private because there I have my SMTP server a secondary server I don't have so I can click save here now you can see that I am very much done with banner secure cell SMTP let's finally go to syslog and do the syslog configurations now in the syslog you can see that we have lot many other options as well so what type of things I have to set here in the syslog that I want to enable login that's correct the memory size uh, as per our request I have to increase this so let me increase that to 8192 then FTP server buffer wrap yeah I want to increase that as well and I know that my FTP server is hosted in the DMZ location so DMZ private will be my FTP now it is asking for username and password so let me give a username say user uh, password now I have to give the password as well so let me type a password here as well let me scroll down for password and password I can use any password so let me use my default one I'm using my default password and uh, the other mandatory option here is the path so in Linux we can give dot as a path now you can see everything is set now what I can do here that I can save this configuration because we have done all those things so let me save this configuration and say in future if I want to edit this configuration I can simply come to the syslog and then I can edit it so one or two other minor things I want to change here that what is the login destination so for that let me click here add that login destination is internal buffer that is okay the event class is filter on severity that is also okay and then the event is I'm going to use say warning Add event auth, okay, no problem. Okay, so I have uh, I have added that uh, event destination as well, and we have other options also that we have this option called uh, email setup, event list, rate limit, syslog settings. So everything that uh, relates to syslog, we have all those options if uh, we have that you know criteria or that requirement we can fulfill that now we are very much done with our uh, policy for this platform let's save this now what I want to do here I have to assign this policy and I have my HQ FTT and remote FTT remote one FTT let's add this to to the policy okay save this configuration so once everything is saved now what I can do here uh, 
that I can deploy this. So let's go to the deployment section. I have some uh, I have some rule change or policy change that I want to deploy. Let's deploy it, and we'll wait to two to three minutes. Once it is deployed, then we do the baseline testing. Now let us check the status of the deployment. It's still going on. It's 80%. So uh, once it will deploy, then what we'll do that will log to our HQ and remote FTT and then we'll check show login. So I'm going to check this command show login. At the moment, you can see that what is the login status? Logging is disabled standby. You can see the logging is disabled. Even if I go to HQ, if I type show and then logging, here also you'll find that the now the login is enabled here. I think the policy or syslog login login is enabled here. What's the policy status? Is it deployed? Okay, so if the policy is not deployed, if you check it, then you will find that the login parameters are not enabled. That means, first of all, you need to deploy it fully and then only you can check. The, so let me again re-verify it. What's, what is the difference between that? So if I check the Console login and the monitor login. Console login, monitor login. It's okay. Because the policy is you know, applied, so that's why the syslog login is turned on. Otherwise, it will show disabled. So this is the test that we can do at the minimum. It's enable now so it's enable now the other thing that we can check here that from here you know if I type expert and I can check ls minus la and that ls minus la I can uh, check and I can check what is the long listing of the files so if we have uh, that thing there and this thing I need to check in the DMG server. So let's go to DMG server first. Let me add here. Let me log into DMG server. If I do ls minus la here, because this DMG server is my FTP as well. So one of the policy that if I go back and if I check my policy related to SMTP, uh, let's hold on. We'll check that. So if I go to my syslog, in the syslog section, what we have done uh, before that, in, in, in the logging setup, that uh, I'm specif specifying my FTP server information as a DMG private and with the username and password that I use to log in here in my DMG internal. Okay, and now if I have that syslog messages that will be pick up and you know that what is the size for that syslog so we have set the size as well for that buffer that buffer is 8192 okay so then what will happen that it will log there 
in the FTP and we will find that with help of ls minus la so if lot many locks will be there you are able to see here all those locks okay so this was the platform setting it was very basic you can see that simply you can go to the platform and then you have all the options if you know all these settings and the parameters you can easily set this in this section let us learn that how we can create VPN tunnel between my HQ and the remote office for that I need to go to my devices and then VPN now here once the VPN uh, thing will come here I need to add VPN and I want to add for firepower threat defense here I have to give a name so this topology name say uh, corp say uh, hub and spoke so I'm going to use hub and spoke uh, methodology in this so let us choose hub and spoke but we have option we can create point to point hub and spoke or full mesh so let us check hub and spoke the Ike version I am using Ike version 2 and then I have two option I have to add in the endpoints hub nodes and the spoke nodes so what I will do that I'll click here to the this green plus that to add the hub nodes and the devices I want to add is obviously the HQ FTD that is my hub the interface I want to add that is the ISP site that's correct and the IP address you can see that is auto populated that uh, that is the public facing IP address okay and the connection type is bidirectional okay so this is the one information that I am adding here now if I click here to the protected network because I need to add the protected network as well so here I will add corp LAN that is 172.1600. Let us add that curve plan. And here, not only that, you can see that we have some available network as well. So, what I will do here, uh, because I need other networks as well. So, let's add that as well. So, here I will click clicking here, click there, and uh, add this new object, something like HQ say DMZ LAN and the IP for HQ DMZ we know that 172.16.102.0 slash 24 save this so why because because now I want to add this as a protected LAN as well so add it here so I have two protected network one is HQ LAN and other one is the core plan that is corporate network let's click ok and now finally we have this dashboard where i have my hq ftt as a hub then a facing interface is isp the, the policy is bidirectional that is ok so let's click here ok so what i have done so far that i have added the hub node now in the next section I need to add the uh, spoke as well so click here to the spoke add the device because this time I want to create this with the remote one FTD then what interface it has it also has the remote one ISP interface the IP address is 198.182.2 there also we have the rule of bidirectional that's correct so here also I have to create the protected LAN and what is that protected LAN network that let's create a new object for remote LAN so remote say remote one LAN and for remote one we know that the LAN network is 172.16.103 dot zero slash 24 okay then we'll save this 
okay so we are very much done with the protected land in terms of my hq and in terms of my remote office so let me do okay here and here also oh i haven't saved it no problem let, let's go back and i have added the object as a remote one so we can search here as well i can type remote one lan added here click ok now you can see this is here click ok now it will come here so so far we have done the configuration in terms of hub and spoke then the network the isp facing interfaces then the protected network let us check the other parameters so i have ike that i've already selected ike uh, version 2 then have i have ipsec in ipsec what type of crypto map i want i want dynamic and rest i can leave like this we have this esp version 3 setting as well but uh, very much we are good for this rest we can leave like this and then finally we have this advanced tab now in this advanced tab we can also fill out the options like i want to select this as a tunnel and for tunnel i want to enable uh, spoke to spoke connectivity through hub I keep alive message is okay so these are the parameters for ipsec that i have used here and this is the configuration for the vpn now what i can do here i can simply go and uh, deploy this and it will work fine there's no problem on that but one thing keep in mind that uh, say in our infrastructure particularly i have my hq and it also have the uh, network in the range of 170 to 16 then i have my remote locations they also have 172.16 that means to compensate this i have to create the identity nat and now i have to create that identity nat so let me go to device and nat i have one hq lan nat and to this i need to modify here what i want to do here uh, i i want to add a nat rule and this nat rule i want to add uh, with certain conditions so let us add those conditions let us add those conditions so uh, the nat rule malo nat okay in category nat rules before that's okay type is a static enable it now in the translation what i want to translate what is my source and what is my destination those are the core plan so the original is core plan and uh, original destination is address and then again i will add uh, corporate lan that's okay so now if you see this rule here you will find that the original source and the destination they have added as a core plan that we have added now they have turned this into the translated original source and destination as core plan as well okay so this was the rule uh, by directional rule that we have and if you want to edit this rule suppose here you can see we have option like pat pool then we have option of advanced and suppose if we don't want uh, the proxy arp on destination interface i can check this box and then i can save this and we are very much done with uh, our rule so first of all i need to save this so let us save this rule so far what i have done i have created one uh, say hub and spoke vpn tunnel and then i have created the identity nat now whatever policies that we have created so far we need to add it 
okay and how we can add it so for that I need to go to my base policy let let's go to the policies inside policy let's move to the base policy now here I have to add a new rule uh, let me click add rule and I need to add one rule here so let me do that so I am inside add rule and here I need to add one rule something called allow my VPN traffic so let's do that then what I want to do here enable this rule into category and the category I'm going to use actually not the category actually I want to use in the into the default that's it yeah because in the default we have the LAN rule now we are very much done with this particular section now what I want as a source zone so source will be my outside and then I need to add my network so let's click here to the network in the network portion both my source and my destination are the core plan okay so that's very much done let's go to inspection and the intuition policy is security over connectivity that's okay login I want yeah log these things add it so we are very much done with all these policies that we have created let us save this thing and then we need to deploy this okay so let us deploy this thing this policy to the HQ remote office you can see what are the new things that we have the NAT policy access control site to site VPN so these are the new things going to be deployed let's click deploy wait for two to three minutes now you can see once the deployment is correct we are receiving the uh, ping reply from my remote office now what I can do here I can go to my remote one FTT when I can go to my HQ FTT and if I type show route so let us check the route and here in the route you'll find that now I have this VPN route towards the ISP side towards one of the my branch Parallelly, if I go to remote one FTD if I simply type show route so here also you will find that we have VPN routes towards the data center okay so this was the configuration of VPN and I follow all the steps uh, you can also uh, verify from your site in this section we'll learn about FMC and FTD maintenance 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 basically have two things that uh, the updates and the health checkup so let us check the update first and in the next section we will learn about the health checks let me go to my uh, FMC here what you have to do you have to go inside system and inside system you can see we have these options like uh, configuration user domain integration update license health like that so what I want to do here I want to go inside the updates so let us click updates once I will go inside update then you can see that I have three different type of updates I have product update the rule update and the geolocation updates now suppose in this case I want to do some product update then what I have to do I have to click here uh, download the updates and once you click there actually it will take actually you know 10 minutes to gather all those information all those updates and then it will ask you that okay you want to update this version this version this version like that 
and some of the updates uh, you need some reboot some of the updates they are something called patching in the system patching in the code so they don't need a uh, reboot okay so I'll wait for some time uh, till it gather all those update patches and then we'll proceed further now you can see that I have two updates here one is the source for 3d defense and the version is 6205 uh, other one is Cisco FTD patch but both these updates require reboot okay so I'm not going to do all these updates but if you want to do the update then you have this button here you can click there and you can update okay so let's do not update this let's go to the next section that is the rule update now in the rule update we have other options means we have more options than in the first section here uh, you can see one time rule update rule imports source download new rule update from the support site suppose let me click here yes reapply all the policies after the rule update imports complete okay let's check this as well so what does it mean that from where I want to add this so let, let me save this first rule update now the recurring SRE import update so this will take the update now the other stuff here if I just scroll down you can see here recurring rule update imports the schedule rule update feature is not enabled let me check this so once I check this then it is asking that okay you can set a import frequency policy deploy and in this particular time period it will push whatever new rules will be there so if you save this as well so we have saved that recurring rule update imports as well and finally here we can check the rule update log so if I click to rule update log it will show me whenever the rule has been updated so you can see this not rule update okay so all those logs also will able to find now let us quickly move to the other section that is the geolocation updates and this geolocation update uh, will learn different things in this this also what we can do we can enable the recurring geolocation uh, updates and we can save this timing okay so it will take all those updates and it will uh, update in the geolocation update note that update may be large and can take up to 45 minutes okay so in this case uh, this is the longest update we have in all these three rules that it will take a long duration of time to get updated and finally we have option here that we can download those updates and install geolocation update from the supported site okay and then we have the update keyword so these are the three updates we have product rule and geolocation apart from that uh, if I want to see some other features of geolocation so for that I can go to my analysis and then I can go to lookup in lookup you can see I have this geolocation now in this particular section you can see that I can uh, type some addresses let me type the lookup address search this it is telling that the IP address belongs to country and this is the country code now in the lookup itself we have option of URL and who is as well so if I go to analysis look up and who is and if I type say 8.8.8.8 .8 and then if I search it then it will search all the who is record of this particular IP and it will tell okay what is the location and all these DNS values 
Right. So let me close here and in the next section, we'll learn about system monitoring. Let us continue our discussion and learn about system monitor and system health. Let me go to our FMC dashboard. And here, if I want to monitor my system, then for that I have to go inside system and then the monitor. You can see that I have three options, system monitor, audit, syslog, the stat. Let us first click to audit. So once you are there in the system monitor audit, then you can see all these big chunk of information that is coming. Okay. So in this particular section, because at the moment I have very less amount of traffic, less policies, but still you can see the logins, say analysis, lookup, who is that we have already done all these things that it uh, it is there in the system monitor and audit. Let's go to syslog. Now the syslog thing you can expect very much uh, that we are getting in the syslog server. Okay, so we have that syslog message. Now finally, we have the statics as well. So let us click to the stats as well. Now here in the start, you can see that it is telling, okay, you can select devices. So for which particular device you want to check the stat. So suppose if I want to check the stat for my HQ FTD, select that device, click here. And now if I scroll this down, so we are getting a stats for HQ FTD and what is the uptime, load, disk utilization, intuition event. Okay, so all those information we are getting. Let me click to fmcexample.com, select device, click. What I can do here that parallelly I can select all these three uh, select device. Okay. And then we are getting the information about all these three devices. Okay. So this is the way that we can check our system and then the monitoring. Okay. Uh, next, we will check about the system health. Before going to system health, say here we have some options like by partition. If I click, it will show you the partition of the memory. If you want to check the process, it's very much similar to the top command in the Linux. So that also you can expand and you can check all these things. Okay, so these options we have in the system monitor. Now let's just quickly move to the system health. And here you can see the list of uh, things that inside system health we have monitor, policy, events. Let me click one more time. Let me go back to system. So I can show you that all those policies. So uh, I have at least five things there. In so we have this monitor policy events, blacklist monitor alerts. These five things are there. Uh, first of all, let us move to system health monitor. Uh, it is showing that this is 100% normal. But here you have all these alert message and I have three messages related to normal. If I click there and then I can expand and read all those messages. So one is for FMC example, then HQ FTD, then remote FTD like this. Suppose if I go to HQ FTD, if I click here, now uh, we are inside this health monitor. 
and this inside this health monitor you can see I have two option for HQ FTD either I can generate troubleshoot file or other option is the advanced troubleshoot file okay apart from that whatever alerts I have you can see here these are the alerts related to that HQ FTD these are the alert messages let me scroll up and we can focus here in the troubleshooting area so if I go and click to generate troubleshoot file now you can see <laughs> these many logs and files it is generating let's generate it once I am generating it then it will automatically create one zip file to me and it will download that so once it will download that file then what I can do here that I can expand that file with help of any uh, unzipper and then again I can learn what is the contents are there in that file okay what I have done here I have given the permission to open all the pop-ups Uh, let me view here that this is coming or not so I have a notification here that task notification message center task bar click here now you can see that it is generating the files uh, still it is it will take some time to generate all those files one it will once it will generate all those files then what we'll do that obviously we will download it okay so here you can see general troubleshooting file is there let me click here and now you can see that I have this tar file go to show in folder if I simply use 7-zip to unzip it extract the files okay this is the file that it has generated and then uh, this star file I can you know unzip and then whatever there in the ex extract I can go through it play around through it and then I can read that okay so that is one way that to generate the uh, logs and those are the troubleshooting logs and then once the logs are generated then we can further go through these files result profiling file us all these things and we can uh, check what is the problem there that is the one option the other option is the advanced troubleshooting and that's actually related to the tag file so once we do this then uh, we we can export this file to the tag for further analysis but still here you can see that I have this option of the thread difference CLI here I can type show suppose and then route Just to check that how this uh, CLI will work. Oh, we'll check that. Let us close this because I'm not getting the option to execute the command. I need to refresh this because you once you type the CLI output, then you'll get one tab called execute that option I am not getting here then it will show here in the output so this is maybe due to the browser issue but once you execute that command so the command suppose show route
we don't have that execute option at the moment that is not coming so no problem leave it and uh, here in the bottom we'll get the execute option you will type execute that whatever we have run with help of CLI you will get here that is uh, those those type of outputs you'll get okay so let us move further we'll check the other options as well so we'll go to the health and say events whatever health related events are there we'll get all those events you can see the memory uses reconfiguration local malware intuition process all those outputs we are getting in a certain time frame if you want you can change the time frame as well so you can go here and whatever time you want you can give the start and the end time and you can change the time okay apart from that we have blacklist option then we have monitor alerts uh, we know that these are the health policies if you want to uh, edit these policies you can edit you can blacklist some then we have the monitoring alerts let us quickly check that as well so here we have the monitoring alerts uh, these are the severity modules like that if you want you can add these uh, health alerts and this is basically something related to that we can create our customized uh, monitoring parameters so that's why uh, we have this option so these are the options we have in the monitoring and you can see that how robust all these things either it is system health monitoring or system monitoring and then the various events audit syslog and strat so how robust this is and you will get all type of monitoring alerts not only the monitoring alerts but we have some extended or enhanced features as well that we can add in the system and in the system monitoring so I am very good to close here and in the next section we'll meet up in this section I'm going to cover different type of events filter and uh, how we can check the network map so let us log to FMC I am inside my FMC let us go to analysis connections and events so once I am inside the events you can see uh, we have all those events and we have two options here either we can check this in terms of connection with application detail or we can check in terms of table view of connection events let us click to table view of connection events and once I am inside the table view of connection events then you can see we have options like first packet last packet action reason all these things say so if I click here to the action then you can see that how many actions we have listed here let me scroll down and now we have option to select or deselect all these tables so there is you know, so much actions we have once we can select deselect then we can apply like this but at the moment let's cancel this so we have all these options now the second thing here that suppose if you want to check the SSL block or action block just click here to the block and then what you will get you will get all the block events okay so now you can see all the block events we are getting now this is you can think one type of filter we have that we are filtering in terms of block events now there is one problem in this particular event search or event filtering that in production network we may have lot many uh, IP addresses events triggers like that so how I can uh, create a filter suppose I want to check events only related to 172.16.103.250 so for that what you have to do you can go to search and inside search so let's the search will come up here I can create one filter 
I want to create one filter say with respect to connection events. So let us check that. Then networking. And I want the initiator IP something like 172 say 16103.250. Okay. Now what I can do here I can save as new and this will be my say remote say remote one events something like that I can save like this save this now again go back to the analysis connection and events so if this uh, filter is actually there we'll see that let's go to the analysis and events and here what I have to do here I have to click here to the edit search if you click to edit search then in the networking go to the networking I scroll little bit down here see I have some search filters here say remote one events let us click to remote one events it is telling okay this is the IP you want to search click search and now what will happen that we'll get the alerts related to only uh, this particular IP address and you can see here I'm getting all the alerts related to this only so this is one of the way that we can filter the alerts and uh, we can check that let us quickly navigate through the analysis and the content explorer as well so for that you need to go to analysis and content explorer this will simply show you and explore you the host based or the content based filtering so here once the data will populate let me scroll down let me scroll down say so here you can see connection by access control action uh, say maybe 90% is allowed and 10% is blocked what you can do here just click here and then you will get the option to expand it so let me click here and I want to drill into analysis once I am clicking drill into analysis a new page is opening and we'll find this is something like connection analysis events and whatever the block events are there you can see all, all of those block events so this is again one way just to filter out the connection and then the block or the allowed events uh, with help of pie chart now finally uh, we'll check about the network host and the network map so let's go to network map this is again uh, it's a very good tool that once you have the policy and the network map policy then all those policies they start listening in this uh, network host and network map here you can go to the host you can expand it you can filter it out means you can go to a particular IP address in this particular tree and once you go inside that then you can see on the top that we have option that we can check various reports related to this particular host so reports uh, you can see on the top that reports related to vulnerabilities application compromise mobile device network device host attributes so all these things we are able to see and you can think this as a dashboard for this particular host okay so if I click here to the network devices again I can go and check so what I want to do actually here actually I want to check the vulnerabilities with respect to this host so let me click to vulnerabilities and now you can see these are the vulnerabilities if I filter in terms of IP address say 103.250 and now it is telling these many vulnerabilities are there again we have that tree you can see so this particular 
IP address is running this vulnerability. The SVID is 548 and you can get all these details. Okay, so again, you can see that it is collecting all those vulnerability status as well. And, and these things are again uh, will become very, very important. Now, let us quickly go and check about the reporting. So let me go to the overview and reporting. Once I'm inside overview, I will get that option. So first go to overview and then click to reporting. Sometimes these tabs will be overlap because you have so many tabs. So just take your time. Go step by step. And then you'll get that. So I am here in the overview. I want reporting inside the overview. Let us click that. Once you reach there, then you will find that in reports, we have network risk report in the zip format. If I go to the report template, then I will get the report template say related to uh, advanced malware attacks network risk suppose if I want to generate so click here to generate and you can give the author name say suppose DF DF something like that the company is called then in the uh, plus menu here I have selected the system name generate this report once you generate this report then you will find that okay generating report here this report is in the HTML format if you click to the HTML then the new page will open and whatever risk related report you have you will get that in the HTML format now you can see how good this particular tool is we are getting all this information Okay, so this is all about the monitoring data, events, reports in this particular section. Let me close here. This is the final section. In this section, we will learn about the API programming. And one by one, we'll learn, say, in the first session, we'll learn about how to use the API Explorer. And then in the next session, we'll learn about the Python scripting, the uh, FMC API okay so let us log to our FMC I am here at my FMC let us go to system and I want to create one user that user is related to API so let me create one user here and then I can click here to create user and then the username I am giving say API admin and let me use my default password twice okay and then we have few options so this user is administrator and then finally let me save this now once i have created this user now let me go to my API login prompt so I can go here to HTTPS this and then slash API slash API Explorer now it is asking the username that we have set let's use that say the username is API admin and the password that we have set need to use that password login to the API Explorer it's still going inside API Explorer here we can see that we have three portion one portion is showing about what is the API infos I have then the services related to that and then the API console means here I will get the output whatever I will select and execute here it will come here and we have options that we can 
take that output in response text info request info we'll, we'll check that one by one okay but overall this is the same type of api explorer that we have in various sdn technology say uh, either it is a epic em or a Viptela, we manage uh, api explorers everywhere you will find very much similar type of settings okay so i'm going to explore more on this section let's go and here you can see that we have api info like audit deployment device groups objects policy so first of all i will explore more on the system information so let us click there to the system information first let me click now here in the get let us click here to the get and you can see the object uh, limit offset all those values now in the output portion this is the api console again click here to the get and you will get one message called success let's just check that what is the version that is running here the server version is 6.2 Okay, so all those uh, system related informations we are getting here in all these three uh, sections here. Okay, let us check the other section. Let me go to the policies. Click to the policies and here in the policies, the first thing that we are getting here is API FMC config version one domain. Let us click here, get. And now we are uh, getting all these things now go to the output section uh, click here to uh, get again and that is successful let me scroll it down and what it will tell you let's explore more on that actually it will tell you about all of the system policies that we have built here so if I scroll it down you can see that we have HQ policy, then the ID, then we have access policies, remote policies. So all these policies that we have created, it is showing here. Now what I am doing here, let me copy this ID from the HQ policy. So let me copy this. Okay, so I have copied that. Let me put that ID here. Okay, and uh, we'll query that. Now you can see that we are getting the metadata, the domain, and all these things. So likewise, we can do query as well from here. So we can copy and paste the IDs and we'll get the metadata of this. So this was the baseline uh, introduction of the API Explorer inside FMC. And if you know how to work around or how to play around with the APIs, then you can do a lot more things here. In this particular uh, basic lab section, uh, we are done with this API Explorer and the final uh, section we have is the python programming so in the next recording i'll explore more on the python programming let us discuss about the python programming so from this api explorer what you can do you can export the file as a python script and once we have this file then we can copy this file so let me copy this file to a notepad let me scroll down. Let me take all the file. So let me again scroll up and down because it's a bit slow to copy it. And we need to copy the entire file. You can see that generation FMC REST API sample script. Let's just scroll it. 
and finally we have the R close copy it open notepad save it uh, and we can save this something like uh, uh, test.py at the desktop so let me save test py and then what I want to do here I need to go and I need to open the Python charm PyCharm here so for that let me open if you open this first time that then you have to sign the CA certificates I want to open just now in my desktop I have one file that is test.py so let me go to my desktop and I don't have that file saved here no problem let me again go back to test.py save this one more time where it is in desktop yeah yes let me go here and close this once now once I close you can see now it is popping up here let's check that I'm opening test.py and in this test.py you can see the programming here so what is the username password and this is the uh, testing file then the header information then uh, various informations and if you know Python programming then you can understand all these variables and the program okay then we have get operation family and then finally it is closed now what you have to do simply that you can go here you can right click from here you can run debug otherwise you can go to the top from there also you can click to run and execute this file so we don't need to go to the API Explorer to execute that from here also we can execute so we can write our script once we have the baseline once we have the uh, uh, variable defined then we can write from here all those files all those programs and then directly from here itself we can execute that and we'll get the same result that we have there with help of API Explorer